Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Survivor Series Live Reactions. It is 7.58 p.m. on the East Coast, and Survivor Series is two minutes away. Uh, we just got done watching the pre-show, and I am going to kick it over to my broadcasting partner, John. What's up, guys? Survivor Series coming at you. I am so stoked for this show. Uh, we were reading some news uh, you know, during the pre-show that may have uh, definitely raised the stakes of this pay-per-view. Apparently, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose are in attendance tonight. Now, that's not saying anything or denying anything. It simply is for the time being, but it certainly has raised this man's curiosity. Cannot yeah, wait for this show. To say that it's raised my curiosity would be an understatement. It's it's one of those things where I don't know if we're going to actually get anything from either one of them, but the fact that they're both in the building and that they're both basically ready to go. 22 years ago, The Undertaker debuted. We might get a big debut tonight. Absolutely, absolutely. And folks, just so everybody knows, because we don't know who's watched the pre-show and who hasn't, uh, the person filling the void left by Cody Rhodes' four teams, Ziggler, has been confirmed to be David Otunga. Uh, didn't even cross my mind, and I know it certainly didn't cross yours when we were doing our preview and predictions last night. I personally am happy about this. I can never get me enough Otunga. Certainly they could have made a better choice. I'm not denying that for a second. But a guilty pleasure is a guilty pleasure. Oh, yeah? Well, I object. <laughs> overruled I need a recess <laughs> ooh I see what you did there but yeah guys we are here it is now Survivor Series and the show is about to begin uh, by the way just to kind of do a little bit of a recap as far as the pre-show goes you already mentioned about Otunga being the man filling the void that Cody Rhodes left on Team Ziggler uh, the actual match that took place on the pre-show was 3MD, um, Drew McIntyre was there, but he wasn't actually in the match. It was Keith Slater and Jinder Mahal versus Cobro. Um, it was really just like a five-minute match. It didn't really do anything. Drew McIntyre interfered to help 3MB win the match, which I, I think that we actually did predict that they would win no matter who they were facing. So that, were, you know, we're one for one as far as that goes. Um, but but on top of that, I, I, did, I did want to kind of mention in here that if they're going to schedule 30-minute pre-shows, it would be nice if they would schedule a match that goes longer than five. Like, if you know you have a 30-minute pre-show, you don't need to show dozens of freaking replays and, and hype videos. It's like, yeah, if we're here to watch the pay-per-view, we're hyped enough. Or better than making the one match longer, and I was thinking, why not treat the pre-show almost like a mini episode of like a Sunday Night Heat or a Velocity? And have at the very least like two to three matches on a card if you can. You know, like really... Get the blood going for the crowd uh, while getting your replays in here and there. Uh, that's what I always loved about uh, shows like Sunday Night Heat and Velocity when I was a kid. You know, you'd get in ring action while at the same time being caught up in all the mainstream shows that you may or may not have been able to watch. So, uh, you know, may maybe they should just start doing it more like that because you get one match that, you know, admittedly I really didn't care too much for going into it because I just find both teams to be so irrelevant. And, you know, they only get a little bit of time and they get completely overshadowed by these recaps. It almost kind of, you know, waters down the purpose of even having a match for the pre-show, but... Oh, look know. at I that. I like been, that. I think it would have been pretty cool if they would have added a third person to Team Cobro and then just let McIntyre compete and have the full 3MB versus Cobro plus whoever they decide to add to that team and maybe let it go for 10 or 15 minutes so that we could actually see something decent on the pre-show. Yeah, I agree. I feel like a six-person tag would have been better, and I think it would have been more of a snug fit. You know, I mean, this pay-per-view is Survivor Series. It's known for its, you know, grandiose tag matches, so I feel like a, a six-man tag would have been a better fit. But I love this uh, this counter in the corner of Punk's championship ring and all the threats that have come along the way. Yeah. Um, this is probably going to be the best match of the night. If not, it, it's easily the most interesting match of the night in my eyes. Definitely. I mean, you know... We've seen champions, you know, have long reigns before, but, you know, the sun always sets sooner or later. CM Punk has made a full year. I mean, that is unprecedented to me. Tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the one-year mark. Ah. Yeah, today's 364. Tomorrow's 365. Well, can CM Punk make it? That's a great question. And I do want to throw this out there. John Cena has new merch, so, um, yeah. 
me and my friends always used to joke, ah, Cena has new merch. That means the championship goes home to him because you can't beat the power of merch. But, uh, if but the anything, last two or three times he's gotten new merch, he hasn't won the match. So I'm, you know, that, that record is kind of broken, but I'm still weary. <laughs> Definitely, and I was gonna. Well, I mean, and that is true. And certainly, if anything can break the power of merch, it's the bulging biceps of Ryback and the ingenuity of our champion CM Punk. So we'll see what comes out on top. Is it gonna be craftiness? Our pay per view is underway. We just got the opening Pyro Survivor Series is on, and we're getting a pan shot of the crowd. Yeah, great looking crowd tonight, roaring in preparation for Survivor Series. Hopefully they stay live throughout the night because I don't want this to be like one big, oh, you're going to be on TV, so you might want to hold your signs up and act like you're really excited, and then like 10 minutes later, it's like dead. Yeah, so I think what you're really trying to say is is that you hope the energy of the crowd survives, and uh, you know me as well. I've always said that a great crowd to me is always a reflection of the quality of the pay-per-view and how much I get invested in it personally. Um, so hopefully you know this crowd will come unglued and be buzzing. And yeah, we'll see absolutely. And we just found out that the first match of the night is going to be your traditional five-on-five Survivor Series match. Somebody pick up the phone because we just... Wait a minute. What? I was going to say we just called it, but that's Brodus Clay's music. I, I'm pretty sure the, the announcer just said five-on-five. Five. I don't know what Brodus Clay's doing. Yeah, Brodus kind of looks like he's slimmed down a bit. It seems like he loses a little bit more weight every time we see him. Maybe that dancing really does help him out. <laughs> He's a jazzercizer. <laughs> and we see uh, Clay sporting new attire with the gold. He's like a really cheesy Austin Powers looking villain right now. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. I love gold! <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's like the fat bastard swallowed gold member. <laughs> are we just gonna call him the fat member we can do that and fat member jazzercising with the funkodactyls new choreography now we saw the uh the claw maneuver Oh, you know what this match is? I, I heard about another potential big tag match. Not necessarily elimination style, I don't think. But uh, I, I think like an eight-person tag uh, being on this show. So. Oh, you know what? I did hear that we might get uh, Kid, Gabriel, and Ray Cara versus PTP and Prepico. So maybe they're going to take that, add Brodus Clay and another heel, and actually make it a five-on-five. Five because the ref did specify... Five on five elimination traditional Survivor Series match. Oh, looks like we're gonna get two of it then. And you know what? Yeah. Good. Actually, I, and see though, that's the thing. I, I wonder if maybe this would have been a better prediction. But then again, we got Ray Carr in this match. So hey, well, anything that gets guys like Justin Gabriel and Tyson Kidd on actual pay per view, I'm not gonna complain. And yeah, it does look like we are gonna be getting that because out comes Ray Carr. Oh, Sin Cara sporting new attire himself tonight. Well, all these, these people in new attire. Pink? What is this? Oh, good. They're back to the split down the middle masks. I love these things. They're so cool looking. They are. I really love the design of them. And uh, it seems like everybody's stepping up their game in the uh, in the clothing department here in WWE. John Cena's got new merch. We got a fat member sporting some gold. <laughs> Sin Cara with a pink mask. And as always, huge pop for Rey Mysterio. And deservedly so. And Ray looks energized and amped up to be a part of Survivor Series. What is this? Only John Cena allowed to wear pink during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but when it's over, everyone goes after pink? <laughs> Damien Sandow's got to feel so insulted right now. <laughs> Sandow's wearing pink again, too, now. Beg pardon? Sandow's wearing pink again, too, now. Yeah, I know, right? He's like, I was the trendsetter. Thank you. I think Ziggler, too. Well, Ziggler can because, you know, real men do wear pink. And, you know, it's not showing off if you can back it up. So. Right. 
Me survivor series. We're talking about the Spanish announce. And we, ju- and we just checked in with the, yeah, we just checked in with the Spanish announce team, so you know they're not going to be around uh, for long tonight, or should I say, their table isn't going to be around for long tonight. Big Show, Sheamus, man, street fight could happen. Oh, uh, uh, Tenzai. Okay, so this is the dynamic here. And they completely did away with Sakamoto, which I feel is a shame. I, I wanted to see him get his comeuppance, but looks like Tenzai survived and Sakamoto didn't. So uh, Tenzai versus Brodus Clay has been worked into this eight-man tag. And now Prepico. Do you ever notice how um, Tenzai's tattoo on his head always seems to be different than the last time you saw it? Yeah, I know, right? Like, I, I either it, it consumes, like, more of his face... Or just, like, I, I feel like I noticed different characters etched in there. <laughs> well, you know, throughout like, the course of the match, it gets rubbed off, because it's not an actual tattoo. Right. PTP! Like, I wonder... Oh, these marks. They think they're worth something. Nope. I... It just, you know, you know it's bad when you just get to hate the face of a tag team. And in this case, face is... I mean, plurality FTW. I don't I hate mean, both of them. I just hate t- Titus O'Neil. Yeah, but even Darren Young's starting to grate on my nerves. That's just because he's, he supports Titus. It's like, dude, you're so much better than this. <laughs> like, how about you develop a sense of taste? <laughs> yeah, and how about Titus develops a sense of, you know, talent? Talent? Uh... <laughs> I mean, you know, don't you find it to be false advertising or, or, or just blatant fraudulence when you claim to be millions of dollars and yet you don't have a single tag team title reign under your belt? Like, just just saying. Are you going to sue him? Potentially. I mean, David Otunga is in the building tonight. <laughs> that is so true. He is. I don't know, though, John. The jury's still out on him. Uh, well, a verdict will be reached tonight. We'll see the kind of asset he can prove to be on Team Ziggler, even if it's being nothing more than a human meat shield. But then again, I mean, David Otunga has been uh, stacking up on Twinkies with Hostess going out of business. So, I mean, the power of the Twinkie, I mean, you, can, you can't sell that short, you know. So, we'll see if Otunga can deliver the goods tonight. Yeah, but, so, uh, so, you know, Otunga's probably going to be, you know, sluggish and, and eventually... Halfway into the match, he'll have to make a bathroom run because he's going to have diarrhea because they're disgusting. Well, that's um, it's mighty descriptive of you. As you see, great chain wrestling here being demonstrated by Tyson Kidd working over the arm of, I believe, that is Epico. Yes, yes that is. is Epico. And you see uh, Tyson Kidd, a graduate of the Hard Dungeon. The second most recent one. Exactly. And oh, beautiful counter there by Epico. Great leg strength, but does not stop Tyson Kidd. And uh, we're seeing a great exchange here. And, and these, well, this is why these two guys are such great talents. Yeah. Just extraordinary. These are the kind of tag team matches that I used to love to watch. Now you see Ray is going to... Oh, I thought Ray was going to go for a senton. I guess not. Great back and forth here in the opening contest. I'm telling you, man, Prepico is still the best tag team in the WWE. I don't care what anyone says. Oh, dude, until the Ascension comes up to the main roster, Epico and Primo don't even have any competition in my eyes. I mean, you know, they're Especially so crisp. Especially with so that cool. valet of theirs. I mean, good God. <laughs> Indeed, you know. <laughs> no doubt about it. And uh, I just look at some of the talents in this match, and, you know, I'm happy that they're on pay-per-view, but at the same time, I think about what they could be doing, and it's just like, man, I hope one day that they can just put the pieces of the puzzle together and just really have a worthwhile career, as we see Justin Gabriel with Standing Moon, so it only gets a two count. Oh, my God, Justin Gabriel is awesome. He is awesome. Man, there's a I feel like if anybody is going to... Definitely. I feel like if anybody is going to break through one day, Ashton, and really get that next level kind of moment for themselves, Gabriel will do it. Um, you know, I'm sure some people would. The, the 10 men in this match, I'd say Sin Cara is probably the most likely to become like a, a big star, but I do agree that Gabriel would probably be next in line. 
I mean, really, the only reason I didn't count Sin Cara in, in, in my personal analysis, I mean, he's tagging with Rey Mysterio right now. I'd say he's in a really good place. Um, I'm really more looking for the guy that hasn't seemed to have his breakout moment in a while. I mean, the last really great thing that Justin Gabriel seemed to do, I mean, you know, if you were a fan of the core, you'd say the core, and I was, but I, even I'd have to say the original Nexus was so much bigger. And uh, I've just been waiting for Justin Gabriel to even get back to half that point of prominence. So we'll see if he can do it. And a win here tonight would certainly help, as you see, Rey Mysterio, with a questionable uh, baseball slide uh, to Darren Young. <laughs> Yeah, right on the inner thigh. Talk about a freaking wishbone move. Nice teamwork being demonstrated by Ray Cara. Sit out wheelbarrow face buster. A yeah, potent combination indeed. Only finds a two, however. And now here comes Primo. <laughs> I love how Darren Young is just like, nope, get me out of here, nope. He may be worth uh, millions of dollars, but when he was facing Sin Cara, he decided to liquidate his assets, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it when Sin Cara does that uh, Hurricane Rana and lands on What balance by Sin Cara, that, that, like a cat, dude, just balancing himself on those ropes. It's like one step up, two steps up, come down. Like, man. He just one up Layla's little crossbody that she does. And see, that's the thing, dude. I mean, and, and maybe that's why people are so critical of him because. Oh my god! Oh, what a clothesline! What a freaking power bomb! Holy balls! Yeah, that was a devastating clothesline too. Holy crap! Uh, I, I was gonna say, you know, I, I no wonder people are so critical of Sincaro because when he when he bodges, I mean, it is pretty bad. But when he does things right, it just looks beautiful. And and this is something that certainly isn't beautiful. Tenzai's gotten the tag, and this is just pure viciousness right here. You know, I feel like I remember somebody saying when Tenzai first showed up in the WWE, yeah, he's a big deal now, and yeah, he just beat John Cena, but give it a few months and he'll be jobbing to mid-carters. How right they were. Yeah, it's it's a shame. I mean, I was a big fan of the gimmick when it came in. I mean, I, I really thought it had the potential to be something, but I, I felt like they didn't even introduce it to us properly. I think it was you who said, and I, I was enthralled with the idea, you know, you'd hype up the debut by kind of showing the transition from an American philosophy of wrestling to the Japanese philosophy of wrestling if you are, well, the artist formerly known as Albert, now Tenzai. Um, you know, they didn't do that. They just had him come in and made people draw their own conclusions. And, and, and they should have known that people were going to know. And, and I think they did later on because they would acknowledge it in a WWE.com article that Tenzai was a former WWE superstar, yet they still couldn't name him by name. Like, I just found that so weird. And I feel like because of their own fear or weariness of acknowledging who this guy was, it really kind of botched his overall packaging to me. Yeah, I would pretty much agree with you. I just think that they went over the top with the Japanese thing. But right now we have Primo with Sin Cara in a camel clutch. Sin Cara fighting out of it. And we go from Japan to Mexico back to Japan because Denzai gets the tag again. Yeah. I think we're set to see an international incident in this match. <laughs> you know, I... With as long as it's taking for the first elimination to happen, I almost have to wonder if this really is a five-on-five -five elimination match or if it's just a one-fall to the finish, and that's why they're taking so long. I would really have to think it, it, it's a one-fall to the finish because, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was elimination because look at where we're at. But at the same time, I mean, this is getting a decent amount of time considering who's in the ring. I mean, Rey Mysterio is the biggest star in this match. Look at Brodus Clay headbutting the living crap out of people. Yeah, Brodus Clay has come unglued. And now the baby face is working in cohesion, and they dispose of Prepico. Yep. And now we're going to get some suicide dives. Aw, yeah. Bodies are everywhere here. Unbelievable. Double Karen acai Ray. moonsault. Sinkar and Ray are next. Yeah, buddy. Oh, my God. Oh, Sinkar go. got so much more air than Ray. I feel bad for Ray because, like, he's known as the high flyer, but he can't live up to Sinkar's standards in the air. <laughs> no, no. Sinkar takes flight to a whole new level, and here's the Battle of the Bulls. <laughs> I thought you were oh, that looked nasty. <laughs> 
By nasty, I mean horrible. What the hell was that? <laughs> um, that was a botch on Tenzai's part because he can't freaking jump. We know you'd like to say you're Japanese, but you're still white, and white boys can't jump. And I think the Tenzai just scored a senton. And the heels are going to take this oh one. Oh my god! He didn't just score a senton. He actually landed on the guy. Okay, it is elimination style. Brodus Clay's gone. Good. Wow, then this match really is getting a, a decent amount of time considering who's in the ring. And yeah, Brodus Clay is the first man eliminated. Like murder Brodus Clay. Gabriel showing a lot of heart here, taking Tenzai uh, head on. Yeah. I mean, Tyson Kidd has Tenzai's number. They should just let him go in there. That is true. They have an extensive history. I want to thank you for pointing that out. I, I completely forgot about that. If anybody uh, knows how to crack the conundrum known as Tenzai, it, it would be Tyson Kidd. I want to see Kidd get in this match. He hasn't really had any extensive time other than that first really great back and forth with Epico. Yeah, I agree. I mean, anytime I get to watch Tyson Kidd work, I mean, not only will I never complain, but uh, I'm reminded what true, uh, pure technical wrestling looks like. And uh, here we see Titus O'Neil, unfortunately, in the ring as the legal man. <laughs> yeah, can somebody eliminate him, please, and just get him out of there so that we're left with the three actually talented guys and Tenzai? <laughs> I saw what you did there. I'm so glad that your vision was 2020. Yeah, but I, I think we can both agree that in, in the packing order, it definitely goes uh, O'Neal, Tenzai, Young, and then Prepico kind of share the same spot because they are a tag team and they're just equal levels of awesome. And oh, 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 oh. Oh, God. Not count, to a, count to 100. And oh, Gabriel, shockingly enough, gets the shoulder up. I did not expect that at all. Yeah, that's incredible. I never would have seen that coming. Is that sarcasm, FTW? Uh, uh, no. I'm legitimately shocked that Justin Gabriel just uh -huh. came out of it. Holy crap! Uh, Dude! Yeah! <laughs> I guess that that entire team has ten size number. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad he doesn't have Sakamoto to take this out on. He's going to have to process his anger the old-fashioned way. Well, we got the two big men out of it, and now we're down to the eight that it should have been in the first place. There you go. Now just get rid of Titus O'Neil, and everything will be equal. Yeah, silence that seal bark. Oh, oh, oh. And Ash, I must say this has been quite a warm-up for what you know is going to be quite the show tonight. I mean, you and I discussed at length two major championships to be decided tonight. Big Show versus Sheamus for the World Heavyweight Championship and, of course, the WWE title matchup. And what a butterfly suplex by Epico. Wow. Beautifully executed. But we know two major championships to be decided. Mid-card champion Antonio Cesaro, the U.S. champion, some shine tonight against our truth And let's not forget the Divas Championship match, which will probably be the second last match on the card. More than likely. I mean, it, it, nothing cools the crowd down like a Divas match. So, And here comes Kid. Here we go, Kid. And, and of course, it's Epico yet again. Can we please get a different exchange from Kid, please? I mean, I'm not complaining because Kid versus Epico is great, but, you know, I'd like something different. I'd like to see Kid versus Young, personally. Or, or Kid versus Primo. That'd be cool, too. And here we go. Here we get Kid right versus now. Primo. I, I, think, I, think, yeah, I think Primo did get a tag somewhere in there. So yep, he did. Your wish has been granted. We didn't even have to gather the Dragon Balls to do it as, as Tyson Kidd kicks out. You oh, that was uh, just... Oh, my God. And you got to wonder, too, Ashton, with Rosa Mendez at ringside, I mean, is the uh, Alberto Del Rio-Rosa Mendez angle going to be played up at all tonight at Survivor Series? Uh, I, I highly doubt it. Yeah, I, I was going to say, one would think no, considering that, you know, we're seeing this match now, and of course Del Rio, part of the bigger five-on-five. Five. Uh, 
But, you know, you never know. Even if it's a quick backstage segment between the two. And I just would like to know where that's going to end up down the line. Is Titus again back in the ring? Why Why do they choose to punish me this way? <laughs> he has to As be in the ring in order to get eliminated, yeah. dude. That's true. That's true. It's a small price to pay. Only problem is his elimination hasn't come yet. If anyone will do it, it's Ray. Well, he did beat a... Titus O'Neil with a uh, roll-up schoolboy a few weeks back on SmackDown. Oh. oh, get the three count. Get the three count. Yes. There we go. Get O'Neil out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful you pinning combination by Tyson Kidd. Tyson Kidd's awesome. And uh, Titus O'Neil couldn't find the lock to that pinning combination. <laughs> uh, I think you mean the key, but yeah, I, I do agree. And you know what? I think we're finally down to the, the seven actually talented people that were in this match to start. <laughs> Absolutely. So from now on, the, the fat has been trimmed and eliminations are actually significant. Man, Primo and Epico just use that toe eye rake move like like it's nothing. They're just like, yeah, you like your face? Well, I don't, and I'm about to mess it up. Epico's just been working like a machine tonight. Now we see a, you know, a, a modified three amigos only with back suplexes. And it didn't work out so well with the third one. Oh, dungeon lock, dungeon lock, dungeon lock. What is he doing? What are you doing? No, do the dungeon lock. Oh man, he didn't even need the dungeon lock to get Epico to tap. <laughs> well, it's very interesting to note, folks, is that the face team has definitely been the more dominant team in this contest. I mean, we're down to two on the heel team with Darren Young and Epico, and four on the face team with uh, Ray Cara, Justin Gabriel, and Tyson Kidd. Uh, normally, Ashton, in these types of matchups, you know, psychology would suggest that the heel team would be the one with this kind of an advantage. But the faces have been in firm control. That's because Prepico aren't heels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't know what they are. I guess they're just kind of in the middle at this point. That was a sick suplex by Primo. Yeah, Prepico certainly earning their money tonight. And a what a counter by Kid. What a maneuver! I'm saving that for later. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I have unlimited uses, so I'm not saving any of them. Oh, snap, snap. <laughs> and let's see. A kid gets the tag to Ray. There we go. Now the question becomes, will Ray play guy who puts other guys over, or will Ray play what Ray has always played, underdog who never loses? <laughs> About to get your answer in the next few moments of this contest. What a kick to the head of Primo. Yeah. Pew. Is that it? One, two, nope. No, Primo. Certainly showing some heart of his own. Yeah, keep screaming, Rosa. Mm. <laughs> I think Tyson Kidd is texting. Yeah, I don't blame him. Whoever he's texting is like, man, we're just squashing these jobbers. <laughs> no, right. We only lost one person on our team. Oh, what a headbutt. Himself. Holy crap. What a sent on there by Mysterio. Wheelbarrow arm drag. Dang. That's not something you see every day. Wow. What coincidence that he would happen to land on the second rope. <laughs> that, nope. Ray Mysterio says, nope, not jobbing to you. And he gets the pin with another unique pinning combination. These high flyers always know the coolest pins. I, I got to give them credit for that. I swear. Let Darren Young just pick up the scraps and eliminate like three guys before getting eliminated. <laughs> and he'd be like, oh my God, I really am worth millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. It's billions, billions of dollars. Nope. Oh, he's about to get 619 into oblivion. I can't believe the face team only lost one member, and it was probably the most appropriate member to lose. 
Rodas, yeah. <laughs> now the question is, is Sin Cara going to steal the glory or tag in Justin Gabriel for the 450? 450, yeah! <laughs> oh, wait. Whoa. What is he doing? Darren's not gonna have to. Darren's not gonna have to wait for Thanksgiving. He's having a finisher feast right here. <laughs> what the heck are they doing? They're just picking on Darren Young at this point. God, this is so. Are oh, and of heel? course, of course, Rey Mysterio is the one that gets the pin. Steal all the glory, Rey. Steal all the glory. <laughs> wow. Scumbag Rey Mysterio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, let's put on this huge flurry of offense. I'll set it up with a 619 and I'll do cool moves and then I'll finish it off and get the pin. <laughs> That's what I call a full circle. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, at least they brought back the split down the middle half masks. Those are pretty cool. You know, I wonder if they even kind of conspired to just have Brodus eliminated. Like, yeah, I know they were all disposed on the outside, but maybe it's just like, you know what? We really don't care for him, and he can't deliver flashy offense like we can. So why don't we just cut that tie, and then we can just do this epic finish. Sin Cara says, oh, Ray, you really want all the glory? Well, guess what? My move is going to get the, the slow motion replay. I'll yeah. tell you, not since... Cr not since Chris Jericho's lion salt have I seen such a beautiful uh, springboard moonsault that Justin Gabriel can deliver. Oh, yeah. And he delivers it out of nowhere sometimes in his matches. They don't always need to set him up for it. And, of course, Mysterio with the flying squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, out of all those maneuvers, I, I'd have to rank them uh, Sin Cara Senton because it's just a thing of beauty. Uh Honestly, I like Tyson Kidd's elbow a lot. I, I think that it gets underrated in some circles. I'm glad he brought it back, because I remember when he first came into ECW, that was actually his finisher, uh, and I've always been a fan of it. Then comes uh, Gabriel's Moonsault, and yeah, Ray's finisher comes last. You know what high-flying move is better than all four of them? Uh, the 450? Who need, well, yeah, that, but I, I would say that that's higher than even the one that I'm about to mention, but the one that I'm about to mention is Huniko's Senton. God, I miss him! Yeah, I miss him too. I really do. I, I he's another one. I really wish he could do something because, man, that senton is just a thing of beauty. Just sheer perfection every time. Let's just be completely unashamed about ripping off TNA and just make another Mexican America faction with Sin Cara, Rey Mysterio, Epico, Prepi or, uh, Epico Primo, and Hunico. Ash, did oh! you see this? Another masked attacker with a blonde wig. Now all of a sudden, Caitlyn gets the lead. Who is it? Is it AJ? That'd be hilarious. It's it, it's Oksana. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> wow, Eve, <laughs> scumbag Eve. <laughs> So that was the payoff. I can't even tell you all how incredibly uninterested I am. Was it worth it? Not at all. <laughs> I would have preferred Ric Flair's daughter, but um, that would just be too intelligent for this division. Ashley Flair. Divas Championship match up next because, you know, they didn't totally just telegraph it. <laughs> the only way they could make me hurt even more is if Caitlyn becomes the Divas Champion. And I have a hunch that she will, which yeah. scares the living crap out of me. You shut your face right now. God, and and you know, like Oksana, just totally irrelevant. Like I understand you got dumped. Like go to counseling. I don't know. Make a collage. Knit a sweater. But don't try and be a part of an angle that I mean, even you're smaller than. I, I mean that. Oh, oh. My anger. <laughs> you sound mad, John. Are you mad? Yes. I can tell. Yet another example of something being telegraphed is your anger. <laughs> well, I appreciate that there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for filling in the gaps for all those at home. <laughs> so welcome. I know they really need help. The only person that needs help is Caitlin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true. 
I gotta say, folks, though, anger aside, I mean, Eve really has. Uh, I, I've enjoyed her as champion. I want to continue to enjoy her as champion. More so so that we can see her versus AJ down the line. That's a match that has to happen once we get past all this uh, he said, she said nonsense with this whole affair angle, which we all know that AJ is going to end up with CM Punk anyway because I proclaimed it to be so, but I digress. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you here, John. I like Eve, but I really don't give a crap what happens to the Divas title. As the WWE has proven, they don't care either. That it, that it, it's really is hard to care, Ashton, when you know the company doesn't care. I mean, they build up all this intrigue, and if you really think about it, Ashton, they confirmed a few weeks ago that it was Oksana, so why even continue to play up that it wasn't or whatever, just to have it come back that, yeah, yeah, it really was, in case you couldn't put two and two together before. And guys like me fell for it hook, line, and sinker, because I'm thinking, no, they wouldn't make the revelation that soon. They would wait for, you know, a pay-per-view or whatever. I mean, I don't know. But anyway, we're here now. The match is happening. Caitlin being very aggressive here. New ring attire for Caitlyn, by the way. Yeah, it looks like a cross between Laura Croft and, uh, I don't know, just your typical biker chick, I guess. I couldn't come up with a core cool reference to sandwich that. So, sorry for my uh, sorry for my loss just now there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what I would call that either. I, I think that Laura Croft is a pretty accurate comparison. Putting the boots to Eve. <laughs> Although, let's be honest with ourselves, Angelina Jolie is way hotter than Caitlyn. Oh, definitely. I would say the only good, I mean, if you, you can even use that term, aspect of this whole story being told is that you know Caitlyn's angry. You know she's fueled by this hungry, vengeful desire to be champion because she was robbed of her chance, and she's just been kind of chasing it ever since, and... And as we know from stories like Dolph Ziggler, Zack Ryder, and so many others throughout wrestling history, there is nothing greater in this business than the chase, even more so having it realized. And will Caitlin have that luxury tonight at the Survivor Series? Oh, who will survive? Blah, blah, blah. Unintelligible commentary because we don't actually give a crap about this match. <laughs> If there's, a, if there's any daylight that, that breaks through the mediocrity of this contest, in my view, it's that you'd have to believe, Ashton, that regardless of who wins or loses, I, I, mean, I mean, if Caitlyn wins, Eve has her obligatory rematch. Uh, but then after that, you'd, you'd have to believe that we're going to get a new contender. So, I mean, that, that's really all I'm looking towards is who's going to step up and, and really be that next challenger because this revolving door of Caitlyn and Layla has gone on for far too long. Hey, look, Eve's angry too, John. Of course, because she's the heel that tries to be Miss America, but we all know it's a fraud. Like we never saw that before. <laughs> Madison rain. Uh, you know, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I didn't even think about that, man. Well, in a man's spare time, he's willing to do some pretty sadistic things, including watching TNA wrestling. <laughs> that is sadistic. That's more masochistic than sadistic, but... Very true, very true. Because, you know, a sadist... Enjoy they enjoy inflicting sure. punishment on others. Yeah, Masochists exactly. enjoy inflicting punishment on themselves. See, you even get a language lesson. You know, in these live reactions, folks. So that this Divas match wasn't incredibly pointless. You now know how to differentiate between the two terms. It's like a Snapple bottle. You might not like the taste, but when you pop the top, it's like, oh, oh, really? That's a nice fact. Somewhere in there is that that's what she said. If only I had the effort to look for it. <laughs> oh, I don't think there's one in there. If you try hard enough, there's one everywhere. And look at this move by Eve here. My first true, genuine moment of interest in this match. <laughs> Triangle armbar? I think so, Ashton. What the heck? That was a very impressive move by Eve, and... She's stuffing the crap out of her. Is, is Caitlyn going to tap out here? She's going to... Yeah, she's, she's going to hump the ground. Yeah, she just humped the ground. They, they always, um... Well, I don't want to say always, but they, but they do mention Seriously. casual. 
Eve, grab her arm and pull to make it actually look like an arm bar and not just a random triangle choke. I wish we'd see, like, I, I wish, like, Eve could totally refine her offense so we'd see more of this and not just, like, like a mid-match maneuver or some stuff because they always do uh, like to talk about in casual passing during our matches that, you know, she has that taijutsu, you know, background and, uh, you know, has that martial arts expertise. And I would definitely like to see more of that in her in-ring repertoire because I just find it to be so impressive when I do see it like we did there. Though I do agree with you, I would have liked it better if she actually pulled on the arm. Caitlin throws one of the most awkward-looking shoulder blocks I've ever seen. She could learn a lesson from Cena. She is so awful. And now Eve begging off. I wonder if Caitlin's going to get suckered in and eat the middle rope. Or, I don't know, get her shin kicked out. <laughs> it's Eve begging. <laughs> Just attach a Brazzers logo to this. <laughs> I, I wish I could have appreciated that reference. <laughs> oh, it's okay, John. People will. They'll get it. I'd say that Caitlyn got the hot tag, but this isn't a tag match, so we'll just say that she got her second Again, win, I guess. with the freaking shoulder blocks. She needs to learn how to throw a shoulder block, take to John Cena, and just learn how to do that. Never thought I'd see the day that I would be saying John Cena needs to teach somebody how to do a wrestling move, but thus it's come. It's so funny that you were talking about John Cena because she um, had even the fireman's carry position, and I'm like, oh man, is she going to do a Death Valley driver right as he's talking about John Cena? That would be sick. But she <laughs> does a, uh, a single knee gut buster. <laughs> it looks like she's about to get drugged to hell. Like a bad horror movie where a serial killer's trying to pull her away from the door. Well, Eve there, I think, tripped Caitlin up. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. I, I guess she got caught in the ring apron. Yep. And Eve, I think, is going to capitalize here. Yep. That's it. Three count. Oh my god, I won? Of course you did, you twit. <laughs> I was worried there for a minute, but nope. First of all, I want to thank my fake tears for lulling Caitlyn into a false sense of security. And then I want to thank me for being talented enough for pulling this off. If you don't know what we're referring to, folks, you'll uh, you'll see. Yeah, Caitlyn using the ring apron, utilizing the ring to her advantage. So it was almost like Caitlyn was wrestling a handicap match. And then, bam, I don't know what she calls that. But let's and let's be completely honest with ourselves. I'd also like to thank my opponent, Caitlin, for putting up such a great fight, even in a losing effort. <laughs> Friendship. I also want to thank Caitlin for not saying anything about me copping a feel when I pinned her. <laughs> well, if Caitlin is a testament to anything, folks, it's that dreams don't come true. So enjoying that spoonful of pessimism. <laughs> Overall, Ashton, I wouldn't say that it was a bad Divas match by any means, but the story just totally killed any buzz I had. Because, I mean, you know, and, and we talked about it, I, I thought the, the final revelation of the story was, was a big thing of interest for me, because I'm like, you know, what's going to go down? But they squandered it. What else did I expect? Well, what do you think there, Otungo, on the right-hand side there, John? It's, uh, it's pretty beast. On the same team as Barrett, Del Rio, Sandow, and Ziggler, he looks so out of place. He'll prove his worth. All you naysayers better recognize. <laughs> okay, D-Lo. Yeah. <laughs> Who often gets mistaken for CeeLo Green. <laughs> really? Yes. I didn't know that. It happens. Uh-oh. Randy Orton wrapping up that wrist tape. <laughs> While everyone else is bickering. 
<laughs> Daniel Bryan and Kane are bickering over who's going to be the sole survivor. All by himself. <laughs> no, I'm going to be the sole survivor. No, I'm going to be the sole survivor. <laughs> and Randy Orton's wish... just sitting back and he's like, I'm so much better than all of this. Yeah, pretty much. I wish Kofi would just often kick Miz in the head, put an end to it. I think Kofi Kingston might have made a trip to Colorado before he got that shirt made. Or maybe Washington, either one. <laughs> he called Otunga a devastating force. <laughs> I love Mick. No mention of Miz, no mention of Otunga, just the other three. Or, not Miz. Who else is on that team? And Orange is going to be like, I don't do Unity. Who else is on that team? Oh, Barrett. God, he's forgettable. You know what, though? I gotta be honest. I, and maybe it's just me, and, and I probably am alone. If there's any good thing that came out of both of these teams, I I, I just feel like the comical elements, however subtle, have just been so worth it. I, I love the dynamic of this team. <laughs> I'm going to be the sole survivor. No, I'm going to be the sole survivor. <laughs> That's right. Bicker amongst yourselves, you fools. United States Championship match. Antonio Cesaro versus R-Truth. Yes, here comes the Swiss sensation. Swiss Superman. Indeed. Both of our examples have uh, alliteration, Ashton. So, we both win. <laughs> now let's see what Antonio Cesaro has to say. I bet whatever he has to say, he's going to use five languages to say it. I was thinking four and a half, but you're quite the bold human being. We'll see. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Cesaro! Thank you for pointing out the hypocrisy of Thanksgiving. I appreciate it. Ha! <laughs> I love how he gets booed for telling the truth. <laughs> It's me. Oh, oh Antonio, you magnificent bastard. That was a wonderful promo, even if the delivery was a little bit off. Any promo that communicates any kind of truth, I can get behind. He's not going to do the hit bump with little Jimmy? I hope not. Actually, I would like to see Cesaro hit the Swiss death on Little Jimmy tonight. That'd be epic. <laughs> he just throws up nothing and then connects with a huge European uppercut on nothing. <laughs> oh, the way R-Truth would sell that would make it hilarious. R-Truth's finisher is so awful. It almost makes me miss the lie detector. Yeah, that was a better finisher, but I, I noticed that finisher's kind of like a hand-me-down. Remember, it used to be uh, Shelton Benjamin's, you know, pay dirt. Then when Shelton Benjamin left, it became MVP's 305. And now that MVP's gone, it's uh, it's uh, our truths finisher, the What's Up, or the Little Jimmy, or whatever he calls it now. Yeah, I think I think it might be the Little Jimmy now, but I'm not even sure at this point. <laughs> so you know, who knows? If our truth gets released soon, Kofi Kingston will probably adopt that move out of nowhere. <laughs> Racist. Hey, hey, it's not racist if it's backed up by facts. Why does it only have to go to a black guy? Because it's a, it has only only gone to a black guy, but to these standards. Because you're racist. Hey, I'm, I'm just stating what I've observed, man. I'm not trying to insinuate anything, but logic says that Kofi Kingston's next in line to inherit that finisher. Well, with the amount of NXT finishers that are being stolen, 
I think that Seth Rollins will adopt it. <laughs> Who knows? Regardless, <laughs> we see uh, this man starting out. Archer dictating the pace. Won't take long enough for Cesaro to I catch up. He is the baby face. Oh, nice wheelbarrow victory roll there by R-Truth. But a Cesaro with a quick kick out. Beg pardon? I said, is that what that's called? <laughs> well, really, if you look at the style of pin he did, that was a victory roll. And then it was in a wheelbarrow formation, so two and two. <laughs> I love how Cesaro's trying to punch Truth from, like, four feet away. <laughs> the Swiss Superman can do anything. Oh, what a headbutt! <laughs> can you say Zidane? Actually, no, I can't, but you can, and that's all that matters. I feel like all my references are going over your head tonight, John. I know, it's it's a sad, sad day, but it doesn't make them any less awesome, because I'm sure our, our viewing audience will appreciate them down the road. <laughs> just, um, just, just Google Zidane headbutt. In the meantime... Antonio Cesaro is owning truth, just like anyone should expect him to. And more headbutts, this time to the gut. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, nice, nice, nice reference there, bud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't know about you, but I'm going to call it right now. I think the World Heavyweight Championship match will be the match after this match. So. Oh, I don't know. I think maybe it'll be the, uh, the other 5-on-5. Five five. Not sure, though. You could be right. Maybe they'll throw a random match on like we predicted. Oh, oh what a stomp. I just love the intensity Cesaro brings to every move. It's like, it's like no wasted motion. From Antonio Cesaro. He doesn't posture. He doesn't pander. It's not about showmanship. It's about results. And, and that's... Now he's totally going to posture at one point. Now Cesaro, he's got that ways like a plan on our troop driving the air out of him. Shooting now with the elbows for the escape. Well, I don't know if you would agree with me on this or not, but this match has been fairly disappointing so far. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. I, I feel like, you know, it's, it's not really what I was expecting. Uh, you know, I, again, I... One of the things I've always liked about Cesaro, I, I feel like, is his ability to play a ground game that, you know, maintains excitement, you know, because most people would associate anybody grounding another person as very slow, methodical, whatever, but I, I think Cesaro had a certain flair to that. I'm not really getting that flair tonight. I don't know if it's our truth or if it is Cesaro, but nice takedown there. Truth is probably freaking winded already. And now Cesaro's got him in gut-wrench position. And that was a beautiful transition by Cesaro, Ash, and that, that, was, that was a thing of just magnificence. <laughs> I love that gut wrench suplex that Cesaro does. It's so devastating and so like impressive looking. And the way he just went into it, like you know, hold for hold, hold and then bam. Yeah. Yep. I'm telling you, I I cannot wait. I cannot wait for this guy's stock to climb. And let's just see. And our truth again going back and see like we saw this maneuver in the in the opening uh, bell. So you know, our truth I guess maybe feeling kind of desperate, but there's an uppercut there by Cesaro as he goes right into the pen. I don't know if I would call it desperate as much as I would just call it, you know, lacking imagination. Repetitive. New stuff to do. Yeah. I mean, pull a lie detector elbow out. That could spice things up a bit, you know. Do something. Maybe they got a bigger chunk of time than they were expecting, and they're just trying to kind of, like, take it slow and wait until the end of the match to pull out their bigger spots. 
we were mentioning on the uh, predictions video that this match could very well go for 15 minutes. At this right. rate, it doesn't feel like it should, but it might. Yeah, Truth getting a burst of offense here. Oh, what a clothesline by Truth. I got to give him credit there. That, that looked impactful. Now, let's Is see if he can. Cheering for Truth at this point? Like, I haven't seen any pro Truth tweets. The crowd doesn't seem to care about this match at all, which tells me that the babyface isn't doing a very good job. You know, it's like, what was the point of this? I think the height of our Truth's WWE career uh, definitely was his, uh, his heel turn. And his period as a heel, because as a babyface, I just feel like he's never clicked with anybody. And uh, that's just me. But we did get the lie detector elbow. And now, oh, suplex stunner. It's been a while since I've seen that from Truth. Just pulling some uh, old tricks out of the bag. But Cesaro still gets the shoulder up at two. I gotta say, now I'm starting to get invested back into this match because uh, R Truth bringing back offense I haven't seen from him in a while. We saw the lie detector elbow. The uh, suplex kind of stunner combination. Now are we going to see the scissors kick? Looks like it. Now if Cesaro has anything to say about it. And, oh, what an, up, what an uppercut. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Cesaro just... Yeah, that's, that's a Cesaro, Cesaro special, we should call it. Oh, Truth's done. Truth's, oh, and there it is, the God-style neutralizer. And that's the end of the match. I mean, Cesaro smash mouth in your face style, paying dividends once again. I'd say truth was good, but I was taught not to lie. <laughs> and Cesaro just steamrolls him. Cesaro is basically at a point where I feel like it would be appropriate for him to show up at a pay-per-view and issue an open challenge to the locker room because nobody yeah, really. has even come close to beating him. I mean, you just want to talk about a force. That uppercut, I mean, you took Truth's head off. I, I'm disappointed we didn't get Swiss death, but that's just me being greedy because I just love watching Cesaro work. I agree. It would have been nice to see it, but we did get one devastating uppercut. That is true. And that God-style neutralizer, man. Damn. I think that they didn't do the Swiss death, and they just did that one really, really huge uppercut because our truth was like afraid to, to go with that high in the air. Right. Hasn't he said before that he's afraid of heights, or was that when he was talking about how he's not afraid of heights and he's just afraid of spiders? I'm not sure. Regardless, he yeah. got his head taken off. Attention. Oh, God, Otunga. <laughs> With a TLC. Oh, my God. This is, isn't this the same one that they used last year? Yeah, I think so. Ah, uh, the law offices of Otunga and Otunga. Wow. Wow, I still hate Seamus. Such a tool. Oh, man. I that, thought you know, that Striker was a tool. Nope, Seamus got him beat. Otunga's starting to turn things around, man. Getting to be a part of the 5-on-5 five five tonight? Being a part of the TLC promo? <laughs> Be hilarious if he was on the picture, just sitting in that same exact office that was just in the commercial, and, and and just having this smug look on his face with the bow tie and the sweater vest and the coffee mug, and taking a sip, and it just says WWE TLC. <laughs> it's for like Judgment Day. <laughs> oh man, that was great. Oh, God, Rock Royal Rumble sounds way too close to Wrestle Rock Rumble for me to feel comfortable saying it again. Yeah, Royal Rumble. We are fast approaching WrestleMania season, folks, as we hyped in our uh, preview and predictions video last night. I mean, you know, virtually six weeks away. Unbelievable. And, and to me, you know, some people might say the road to WrestleMania starts with the Royal Rumble. To me, the road to WrestleMania starts with the new year. Yeah, definitely. And and I would even go as far as to say 
The road to WrestleMania starts as soon as the TLC pay-per-view ends. I, I would certainly agree with that. I mean, I mean, you know, because then as soon as the TLC pay-per-view ends, I mean, you've, you've got those big pay-per-views. And yes, I even consider Elimination Chamber to be a big pay-per-view because if you're an aspiring champion, it's your last pit stop. If you are a champion, it, it's your last hurdle before the biggest challenge of your professional life, and that's going to the big stage. You know, I, I mean, it's it's a time where boys become men, men become legends, and legends become something else. Uh, you know, WrestleMania. Can't wait for it. Are you ready for WrestleMania? Oh, I've been ready, son. I've been ready. As we see now, a recap between AJ Lee and Vicky Guerrero, which tells me, Ashton, that the next segment on this show will be AJ's evidence against Vicky Guerrero. And I'm hoping it's actually something interesting and not just rehashing the fact that her and Edge got together and then her and Dolph Ziggler got together because that's not really evidence. That's just obvious fact. <laughs> Which was more unsatisfying and disappointing. What a line from Ziggler. <laughs> That's not PG. <laughs> I guess John Cena couldn't rise above the rumors. Oh, you know what the evidence could be, Ashton? It could be of Vicky Guerrero snooping through uh, Cena's phone and editing those messages like AJ accused her of last Monday. In fact, now that I think about it, that's what exactly what I'm expecting AJ to reveal. AJ looking quite nice tonight. I agree, she does look good. As per usual. Yeah, guess what, crowd? You're not going to be able to what her because she changes her diction up too much. Get used to it, Marks. <laughs> nice, Ashton. Real nice. Well, why are the crowd being douchebags? Oh. <laughs> she called her a witch. Beijing. Uh-oh, this was inevitable. Wow. Oh, she squats. Yeah, she does. I think she's AJ Lee, and I think she's about to expose you for something. The fraud that she really is. AJ Lee's so good at Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> You're really enjoying Ricardo's burrito. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> JBL something out of National Geographic. <laughs> JBL so perfect.
Mickey, that's painfully obvious. It doesn't make this segment any more hilarious. Oh my god, shut up, Vicky. <laughs> wow. <laughs> AJ, <laughs> it's like looking directly into the sun. Wow. Is that a threat, Vicky? Grr, old lady angry. I saw what you did there. My best impression of the Hulk? Yeah. Good call. Yeah, get in her face, AJ. Even though you're so short, you're basically in her cleavage. What the fluff? Who is that? Is that Tamina? Whoa! Yeah! <laughs> I it dig Tamina. it! Holy crap! Hashtag heal? Um, totally. The female execution of the WWE. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Wow. Oh, they need to have a freaking TLC match next month. Wow. Go to that was, Mina. That was different. <laughs> what the heck? WWE just totally made up for whatever happened in that Divas match earlier. I can't even remember who participated. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, though, guys, this really is great. I've always been a big supporter of Tamina. You know, actually, it was around this time last year that she seemed to be on the rise. I mean, we know last year, when it came to Elimination Chamber, WrestleMania season that we were just talking about a few moments ago, faced Beth Phoenix for the championship. Now it seems this year she's aligned herself with Vicky Guerrero. Let's hope it has better results. Definitely. I'm really happy about this. That was awesome. That's my first, that's my first real markout moment of the night. <laughs> and it was a Divas segment. Who would have thunk it? Definitely. Like I thought it was a debuting uh, woman because I'm just like, man, that, that didn't look anything like Tamina. She's totally changed her look. Uh, she's really just changed her attire. She still looks the same. I mean, she's got the highlights in the hair now and definitely a more like vibrant attire. Yeah. Well, that was interesting. That was a good wake-up call. Hopefully now the crowd will come back to life, and now maybe we can, too. Yeah, definitely. I mean, man, thank you, Tamina. I mean, who would have thought that sentence would be uttered on, on this live reaction, huh? Nobody. <laughs> Absolutely nobody saw that coming. Thank you, WWE, for that one. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Ah, Paul Heyman!
condescending Heyman. The next great meme. <laughs> Better than condescending Wonka ever was. In the world. Yeah, oh, that's a pretty big place. He totally forgot to pull out his inner Metallica and be like, world. Da. <laughs> yeah, Heyman, next time put some stank on it. I, I, I don't like this theme song. It's almost like it doesn't even exist. I'd be happier if that illusion was a reality. Uh, you and me both. WWE's had some pretty uh, lackluster themes as of late. Are you surprised? Eh, somewhat. I mean, I, I, you know, in, in the early years of my wrestling fandom, I derived a lot of my music taste uh, from the WWE pay-per-view themes. I mean, it was WWE pay-per-view themes that introduced me to likes of Evanescence and uh, God, what's that other band I'm thinking of? Saliva, uh, you know, and and others. But uh, well, yeah, lately, they have man. definitely had some great themes in, in years past. Although, you know what? They're not. They're not completely missing out as far as themes go because there have been a few over the last few years that have been pretty good. Like I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure one of the themes over the last few years was a Black Keys song, and I love them. And that was actually the, the way that I got introduced to them. So yeah, that definitely helped. And and you know, really, when I say like lost themes, I, I'm I'm really just recounting mostly for the past, eh, I'd say two years for me. There's really, really nothing that stood out, but you know, uh, definitely. And hey. We're getting the video package now. The World Heavyweight Championship rematch, Aston. Big Show versus Sheamus is finally here. Yeah, maybe Sheamus can go a whole match without making himself freaking bleed. Although I doubt it. I doubt it too, bud. And yet, maybe we are just going to get a straight-up rematch. I mean, no consequences, no edicts have been laid down by Booker T, despite the fact that Sheamus blatantly defied him on the go-home SmackDown by assaulting the Big Show. I mean, one would expect with the way that the, you know, Booker T managerial political figure has been booked that some kind of repercussion, even if it's not necessarily a stipulation, you know, will be felt for Sheamus. But maybe Booker T has no choice but to let this go. You get two titans like Big Show and Sheamus, can't keep them apart forever. Yeah, really. And down, down goes Regal. Down goes Regal. <laughs> I love how Seamus has the audacity to call somebody else a bully. Yeah, well, wasn't he in a feud at Del Rio only a little while ago where he actually stole his car? Like, that's not bullying at all. That's not Grand Theft Auto at all. <laughs> oh. I mean, it, it's... It's so great that a guy like Seamus can be a moral authority of what's wrong and what's right. Because he's never done anything wrong in his life, right? <laughs> Naturally. Naturally. I hope he doesn't say the Big Show's scared of him, though, because apparently he isn't. I'll tell you what, though, Ashton, our criticisms of Sheamus notwithstanding, I mean, this confrontation from a uh, match standpoint, uh, I I cannot wait for this. In fact, I, I got to be honest, I mean, I think the triple threat match is more intriguing, but, I mean, I, I was actually, you know, really more excited for this match, seeing as how it just really delivered at Hell in a Cell, so... And you know what? I agree with you, but I'm just hoping it doesn't under-deliver because of the expectations that we put on it. 
Absolutely. And, and that, that's, that's a dangerous line they're walking, and you're absolutely right. Because the thing was, as we said in our video last night, you know, I don't think they could have lost at Hell in a Cell because the expectations were so low. Right. Now the opposite game is being played. They delivered great at the pay-per-view. Now they got to deliver a great again here tonight. Absolutely. So, yep. We'll see what happens. We will indeed. God, I hope Big Show wins. You and me both. And, uh, and folks, just a little bit of advice. Don't be expecting any fireman's carries. Don't be expecting any German suplexes. Expect a, a pure fight, an all-out brawl that could escalate to the most violent levels. It's all about the World Heavyweight Championship and for Sheamus avenging a supposed friend in William Regal. Will he get his vengeance tonight? This, uh, this pairing here certainly hopes not. All I have to say, John, is lobster head. More eloquent words have never been spoken. <laughs> oh, man. I hope the Steelers lose tonight. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We're doing a wrestling video. She she Seamus' relevance, folks, where comments about a Pittsburgh football team can be made and not be out of place. <laughs> oh, man. Good old Seamus. Crowd seems Ugh. to be behind Seamus, though. As you see, referee Scott Armstrong will be officiating this contest. He's a real referee, according to CM Punk. <laughs> I remember that segment. <laughs> Hopefully everybody else does as well, so my reference was not in vain. <laughs> oh, it wasn't. And here comes the champion. And I use that term very tightly. <laughs> Because, uh, to me, Big Show's brought nothing but pride back to the World Heavyweight Championship. That's right. Soak it all in. Take your time. Make Sheamus wait. Just like all of us had to wait for his reign to end. You brought it full circle, dude. Yeah, like a boss. Talk to corporate! Like a boss. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the rest of that song. I haven't heard it in forever. Oh, oh. Well, that killed any kind of momentum we had going for that little thing there. <laughs> it's yeah. okay, though, because it's a worthy sacrifice. Because in exchange for our momentum, Seamus will now be lamenting his crushed dreams before this night is through. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. Because the only thing better than Caitlyn making us all realize that dreams don't come true is Seamus making us realize that very same sentiment only ten times stronger. <laughs> and Seamus is bleeding already. He's like Ric Flair, except worse. He better be thankful that this uh, World Heavyweight title match wasn't a first blood match. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? What the heck? That's a WrestleMania match waiting to happen. The new 18 seconds, except this time Sheamus... <laughs> it's like the bell rings. Sheamus beats his chest to get the crowd pumped. And then, and then if it was against Daniel Bryan, he'd be like, he's bleeding, his chest is bleeding, his chest is bleeding. Yes! 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 And Sheamus in 17.9 seconds has lost this <laughs> first blood match. And then 25 minutes later, they would come to Daniel Bryan and be like, Daniel Bryan, you're the new world heavyweight champion. How do you feel? And he'd just be like, man, that was such a brutal match. <laughs> I know first blood matches are usually pretty, pretty ugly, but that was way worse than any other that's ever happened. I am so exhausted. I need to get out of here. <laughs> he would troll so hard. <laughs> I love how Big Show went right for the knockout punch and Sheamus had to act like he was ready to duck it. Uh, definitely a sense of urgency on the part of the Big Show. As we see, like I said, it's just already deteriorated into an all-out brawl. Yeah, they're just like throwing punches and, and, and Sheamus is throwing kicks at the same time. And it's like, God, take a, take a lesson from Daniel LaRusso. Come on, guys. Let's see, oh, what a headbutt by the Big Show. That'll negate any offense going for Sheamus. What were we talking about, Zidane, earlier? Yeah, definitely. But I don't think Zidane would want to cross paths with the Big Show. Yeah, I, I agree. He's a he's he's a soccer player, not a rugby player. 
Wrong, wrong sport for toughness. <laughs> you see now, Seamus actually feels like he's going to get reprieved by walking all the way to the other corner. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's not an outside to the ring or anything. I need to get away from the big show. I'll walk to the other corner. Where he's just, like, right there. Where, like, for him, if he takes five steps, which would be, like, eight for the normal human being, he'll be right next to me again. Yeah. Oh. oh Seamus sowing some Here. ingenuity there. Oh, Seamus is taking a page out of Jack Swagger's book. Chopping down the redwood. You see, now look at Seamus here. Uh-oh. Oh, that looks like it would hurt. See, now, if I'm Seamus and Big Show's tied up like that, I would just keep bro kicking him square in the face until he lost consciousness. That's and just then, me, though. And then unwrap him and lay him out and cover him. But I'm sure Seamus' excuse would be, no, fella, I want to make him suffer for what he did to my friend. I hope Regal screws Seamus out of the championship. That would just that be so deliciously sick. evil. It would. Regal's such a great villain, too. He could pull it off. Big Show's just like, okay, enough of this. I'm going to untangle myself now. <laughs> <laughs> He's just in a troll -la 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 kind of mode. That wasn't even the battering ram. He just jumped on the guy. Gosh. I got to give these guys credit, though, Ashton, for, for being too... Well, I mean, Seamus just being very well built and, and, I guess, big in his own right, and then Big Show just being big. Uh, they, they've kept a nice pace through this yeah, match. Yeah, that's I mean, true. They ha yeah, they started off quick with the, the constant flurries of punches and now it's like they haven't really let oh what a spear <laughs> i was waiting for your reaction to that what a spear in midair by the big show holy crap holy charzel cakes indeed <laughs> and what i i don't know <laughs> he, we'll he just... with it. You, you just invented a, a, an amazing drink that goes perfect with charzel cakes which is another <laughs> made-up thing that you came up with and it's an amazing <laughs> snack that rivals crumpets and tea in England. Yeah, what a smorgasbord right here in the U.S. <laughs> that, that spear just broke Seamus in half. And again, I gotta tell you, so far, I really can't deduct any points from this match as, as compared to Hell in a Cell. If anything, I think Hell in a Cell may have actually started out slower than this match did. Um, you know, from what I'm trying to remember. I mean, these guys have just gone all out. It almost kind of makes me disappointed, Ashton, that the Booker T didn't lay down an edict for this to be a street fight or a no rules match. Because well, I feel, now I, they have to play within the confines of the rules, which means that they need to make sure that they get in the ring on time and stuff like that, and it, it increases the drama. That is true. That is, that is very true. Again, I mean, what do we always say, Ashton? <laughs> Oppor opportunity cost. You know, by doing a regular match, I mean, you're creating more drama. But I mean, I don't know. So these guys are definitely utilizing it, though, to their fullest advantage. There's no argument there. Big Show's just towering over his prey. That's right. Savor it. Savor it. Pick him apart. <laughs> Big Show looks like he's just, like, circling around him like, hmm, what am I going to do to hurt this guy next? Whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be fun. <laughs> just pick him up and punch him out. Headbutt. Yeah. And I gotta say, WWE, once again, and, and you know, these two guys, you know, in the ring, Sheamus is looking like a legit underdog here, and I really appreciate that fact. You know it won't last long, though. I mean, he, this is still the guy that kicked out of a, a mid-air codebreaker. This is true, but if anybody can prolong it, at least for longer than the average period of time in which Sheamus looks like an underdog, it is the big show. And I, I think if there's any time that Sheamus is literally going to have to fight from the ground up, it is now. It is tonight. His championship rematch. And, and that's something to consider, too, Ashton. I mean, let's really look at the implications beyond Survivor Series here. Sheamus loses this match. You know, by all accounts, he goes to the back of the line. I don't understand so, I mean, why the Big Show is targeting Sheamus' left arm. Potentially, but maybe he doesn't want to get hit with white noise. Oh, that's a good one. I didn't even think about white noise. I was just thinking broad kick. Maybe well, white noise is this. That if, if Sheamus doesn't have the ability to set him up using white noise that he won't be able to connect with the bro kick at all. Exactly, because they have established it as a sequential sort of process. Yeah. And, 
you know, if Sheamus doesn't have the white noise to cut off Big Show's stream of consciousness so that he can't actively prepare for the bro kick, how can he nail the bro kick? See, and John, this is what's so brilliant when you and I are a team because I don't catch these things right away and then you bring them up and it's just like, aha! You know, like, by Jove, he's got it! And then it's <laughs> well, like, it makes I have you to... appreciate the match more because I realize what they're going for and it's like, you're just, yeah. This, this team uh, right I, here, this is the I, A squad. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I have to earn my keep somehow with all of my uh, my ridiculousness and my jokes throughout the night by seeming somewhat incisive and perceptive. <laughs> Did you just say incisive? Indeed, I believe I used the term properly. No, I you, you probably did, but anytime I hear that word, it reminds me of the incisors, like teeth incisors. Yeah, yeah, indeed. My mouth is quite incisive. <laughs> indeed, indubitably. <laughs> I'm gonna go masticate now. <laughs> using my incisive mouth. <sighs> I tried using one of those electronic toothbrushes, but then I realized those are for marks. I mean, I I've tried it; they, they, they just suck. <laughs> but anyway, this I is use an electronic tent. toothbrush, John. <laughs> Beg pardon? I use an electronic toothbrush. It's battery powered. Dude, I don't understand how you make those work. I find those so uncomfortable. Like that kick to Seamus' face, holy crap! Wow, the battering ram didn't even knock Big Show off his feet. That was one of the weakest super kicks I've ever seen in my entire life. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a live reaction where we bring Dental Decay full circle with a super kick. That just happened. It did, it did. <laughs> Elbow drop! But yeah, I, I have no idea how you, how you could be... Yeah, I, I have no idea how you could be comfortable using an electronic toothbrush. I, I hate those. I, I've tried them on at least five different occasions. I feel like they don't even make me cleaner. But regardless... <laughs> the key is to just brush your teeth like it's a normal toothbrush and let the, the brush itself do the work for you. Good to know. Good to know. I'll have to try that next time. I it's not about me working hard. It's about me working smart. I hate this nerve hold because, like, it looks like it would hurt so bad. Like, it even hurts me just thinking about the idea of somebody grabbing me that hard in that area. Yeah, I agree. You know, Ashton, and, and it makes me think, because I've seen Big Show do that nerve hold. If he ever gets, if he ever wants to upgrade from the knockout punch, I don't know why he would. I feel like it's it's such a great fit for him. But uh, I would almost like to see him adopt a submission hold like Kane first had, when he was kind of like gloving the face when he first came back. Yeah, kinda, that's like, right. In the that's face people. Thing. Yeah. I feel like, and you know, and you know, Mick Foley with the mandible claw. I feel like Big Show could really, uh, could really utilize a hold of that kind of nature very well, but. He has a very effective repertoire. I mean, it's his very repertoire that he has right now that made him the world heavyweight champion. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, but you know us geeks, John. We're always trying to fix things that aren't broken. A lot of the time it works out for us. Indeed it does. Indeed it does. That's why we're so awesome. Nikola Tesla. Ha! <laughs> so true. Greatest geek that ever lived. Indeed. Indeed. You see now Seamus still... Uh, being a victim of the uh, the grounding game by the Big Show. I mean, Sheamus is going to have, I think, you know, even if he supermans up, so to speak, he's going to have a very tough time fighting up. And for those who have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, go to theoatmeal.com and just find the Tesla comics because it's hilarious and awesome and informative. Indubitably, again. (laughs) Here we go. Back to the match, though, because I... I tend to stray off topic. Although I will say this match has been good. It hasn't been so good that it, it I just can't turn away or stop talking about it. I think though in the next few moments we may see it pick up as you see Sheamus though. Trying to oh and, and Big Joe just tosses him off with like very little effort. I was gonna say uh, you know, showing a little bit of shrewdness, going for the sleeper, but Big Show just tossed it off like it was nothing, but still Sheamus may have opened up the window just a little bit to create a base of offense. I love how Sheamus take this match selling back. the right arm at this point. Like, oh yeah, you worked on that right arm for a good five minutes. <laughs> what good did that do you? <laughs> it did him nothing. But, that, but then again, and this is the same guy that at Night of Champions this year when he faced Alvaro Del Rio sustained two cross arm breakers after having the arm worked over the entire matchup. I mean, nothing surprises me. And the final cut by the Big Show. It's been a while. Sheamus I mean, kicks out. 
he's really brought that move back in this Sheamus feud, but before the Sheamus feud, it's like we haven't seen that in years. No, no, we haven't. But see, that's what I love about, you know, a, a really in tune with his environment kind of seasoned veteran. You know, they, they remember all the tricks in their bag. And, you know, they know, hey, even though the crowd may have forgotten about him, doesn't mean I have. And certainly the final cut is, is paid great dividends for the big show. And, oh, look, oh, 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 God. Oh, God. Oh, man, this is going to happen. This is going to yes, happen. It is. Yes, it is. Oh, my big, God. Electric chair. Just gets, Good yeah. bump, big show. Good bump. I was going to say, big show, uh. Big Show just got sentenced to death by way of electric chair, and somehow he survives. That was yeah, that quite was a, a heck of a bump, though. you got to give Show credit on that. Big guys don't normally take big bumps like that. Especially big guys in their 40s like the Big Show. Well, Big Show is 39, maybe 40, but he's not, like, up there. He's not like Undertaker. <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> I could see the Undertaker taking a bump like that six years ago. Now, I remember, folks, in our preview and predictions, I mean, I, I had a very tough time picking who was going to come out on top. I ultimately sided with Ashton here that the Big Show would retain. But with maneuvers like this by Sheamus, I don't know, a, a second World Heavyweight Championship reign doesn't seem like so much of an impossibility. I just see now these guys are in a slugfest on their knees. Yeah, Big Show's going to own him. Don't be so sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I shouldn't have been so sure. What damage to my arm? That doesn't exist. <laughs> what is this arm damage you speak of? Psychology? What's that? I'm a wrestling major. Psycho what? <laughs> a beautiful catch by the big show. Oh, you Jokes mean that I'm... stuff that Dr. Shelby does? Yeah, I, uh, I uh, like... No, 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 no. BS. Before science on that maneuver. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, it's believable. It's just pathetic. Kick out. Thank you, Big Show. Hey, Ashton, I guess there goes my brilliant analysis from earlier, huh? I guess I should have known better. Yeah, and, and it makes Seamus look like a complete jerk as a person and as a worker because he's not selling the arm at all. Now, to any of our younger viewers that potentially may be watching, you may be thinking to yourself, but Seamus is the baby face. He's the good guy. Shouldn't we all be rooting for him? No. Nope. No, we shouldn't. <laughs> because the villain here is actually more realistic than the hero. That is sad. Oh, come on, Big Show. Let Seamus go for that bro kick and you knock him into next week. Do it. The Do it for me. The villain is far more human than the, the so-called hero. Seamus' <laughs> shoulders are gigantic. It looks like he might have dislocated one of them. And now Seamus doing your favorite move, Ashton, the, 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 the beat chest. And oh, Scott Armstrong needs a bro kick. Ah! <laughs> and, now, and now the stakes have been raised. Where's Brad Maddox? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get me Earl Hebner from TNA. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you mean Earl Hebner signed to a 10-year contract? He'll be dead by the time that runs out. <laughs> Someone get me his son, Brian. <laughs> Q Booker T, Q Ben. Oh, we have like, two memories checking this one. Aren't we? Like, like, we do have paramedics for this. Just roll Scott Armstrong out of the ring. Get a new referee in place. <laughs> Oh, Big Show's going to capitalize, though. He's going to capitalize. He's stalking Sheamus. Yeah, but the question is, if he does capitalize, will he get the three count? He did. Two. Yeah! Yes. i got to be honest. I'm kind of disappointed it ended that way. It seemed kind of rushed to me, but... Who gives a crap? Big Show's still the World Heavyweight Champion. I'm okay with that. Now it makes Sheamus look like a jerk for bro kicking another ref. Maybe we can get an actual banning of it. Maybe we can get a fine. You Big never Show know. That ref I don't care if the Big Show pulled the ref in front. Sheamus still pulled the trigger. Yeah, Big Show sees referees for what they really are, human meat shields. I mean, if a police officer shoots... Look, here, here, this is a perfect way to put it. If a police wait, officer... Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Referee's consulting with Justin Roberts. 
Is Big Show going to lose by disqualification? Either way, I don't care as long as he keeps the title. Okay, I didn't know if anything significant was going to happen there. We now know that Sheamus can, in fact, beat the Big Show, albeit by a very slim technicality. And Big Show will still be the World Heavyweight Champion, which is the only real big talking point at the end of the night, Ashton. But yeah, as I was about to say, if a police officer shoots a hostage that uh, a bank robber is holding in front of him, who do you blame for that? Because I blame the police officer because they're supposed to be better than that. They're supposed to hold fire until they get a clean shot, and Sheamus is a douchebag. Definitely. I mean, uh, I, I guess... I guess Scott Armstrong's foolish pride did get in the way of that bro kick. I see what you did there. Thank you. Oh, and now this is definitely going to set up a chair matchup at the Oh, yeah, because, you know, this totally isn't a heel move on Sheamus' part. And this totally isn't a blatant setup for a chair match at the TLC pay-per-view. And this totally isn't Sheamus attacking the big show from behind with a weapon to get an upper hand. That's not a heel tactic at all. Douchebag. <laughs> and really, like, like if this is like a, a, a Shawn Michaels Triple H esque feud, I could forgive it, you know, because Triple H actually crippled Shawn Michaels. Really, in, in the grand scheme of things, Ashton, what's the worst thing the Big Show even did to William Regal? What he assaulted him? Like that hasn't been done to virtually any superstar in the locker room that's been around just long enough to be part of an assault. You know, you come back. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was pretty awful. I, I think I don't even know. They're, like to to describe the level of angry that I am at Sheamus right now. He's such a heel. Why? Why do people cheer him? Why do you like him? Is that a legitimate question you're fielding to our audience? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause... Video responses, comments, people tell me why people like Sheamus. He's a douchebag. <laughs> I don't know if I mean – I mean, Ashton, here's my question to you, really. I mean, because honestly, like, if anything, this chair assault has sucked me out of this whole thing. Um, I mean, are you happy these guys are getting a third match on pay-per-view, or were you like me and you were really hoping for a new contender after this? Because I, I was really actually kind of hoping this would be a two-match, you know, pay-per-view series. But, I mean, we're clearly going to get TLC now. Dude, I don't give a crap if they have a third match. I just think that, the, that this should be considered a heel turn by Sheamus. This should be a double turn, but it's not going to end up being because WWE fans are freaking stupid sometimes. And where's Come Booker on, T? People. What is... Come on. Something. Do something. Someone. I think it's something that all could cash in. Real nice, Seamus. The bottom line is, where's Dolph Ziggler? I know, right? Oh, dude, but he'd have to get Big Show back in the ring, and that that's that's 440 pounds of dead weight. It is. Seamus may be broiling over in anger, but I just can't help but smile that he didn't walk away as the world heavyweight champion. Yeah, pretty much. He's such a... And, and folks, as I you know stated a few minutes ago, I, I think this whole post-match segment was a blatant setup for a chair match uh, at the TLC pay-per-view. I'm calling it right now. I'm locking it in. And as far as this match goes, I mean, I, I'm going to stand by. I mean... I could see where Ashton was coming from with his evaluation of the ending. I, I just don't know. That just still felt like it just a little bit rushed to me. I will say, though, I actually did like this better than their Hell in a Cell bout, personally. I thought it had a great pace, great back and forth. It was a, another great struggle. And now I, I am a bit weary, though, for what their TLC match is going to be. But, hey, I mean, these guys have had two uh, 
you know, one would say great match. This is a good match, I'm, I'm sure, by many. I, I personally, again, enjoyed this better than Hell in a Cell. So two great matches under their belt. I should uh, definitely be confident in a third. I'm just not sure with it just being a chair matchup, how much a chair is even going to be utilized. If that's even the case, I could be wrong. But, I mean, I, after a segment, post-match segment like this, I mean, what conclusion yeah, am I Yeah, Seamus, you're such a morally upright citizen. You attack people from behind with weapons. Let's all cheer the good guy. Yeah, he's a jerk. Yeah. Because this wasn't excessive at all. Hey, hey, hey. See, now I'm at the point that I'm not readily willing to say, oh yeah, Big Show's totally going to retain at the next pay-per-view because they're play basically playing it up like Sheamus needs to use a steel chair in order to beat the Big Show. And he's going to be able to. So yeah, I'm 50-50 on that right now. We'll see. I mean, if I thought I had any right to be worried about Survivor Series, you can't even imagine my concern going into TLC. But then again, remember, Ashton. Wait, 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 wait. What's the, what's the crowd chanting? I didn't catch that. We want Ziggler. <sighs> you gotta love see, it. See, WWE crowds really are dumb because, I mean, they're chanting we want Ziggler. Big Show's not even in the ring. Well, uh, yeah, as I said, I mean, that's 440 pounds of dead weight that Ziggler would have to pick up, bring all the way back to the ring. And you're telling me in all that time Big Show wouldn't regain consciousness? Mark, please. Exactly. But then again, Ashton, I mean, TLC is another day. And honestly, because of this, uh, the stipulation that I'm expecting, because of your fears and my fears, uh, Dolph Ziggler has once again become a blip on my radar uh, with their uh, third matchup at TLC. Because yeah, if Sheamus somehow... I mean, that's when Brian cashed in. So yes, it is. Yes, it is. Who knows? But at the same time, you got to take into account that Brian was saying the whole time, yeah, I'm waiting until WrestleMania. That is true. That is very true. But uh, Dolph has made no such promises, so who knows when he'll strike. Five on five. Up next, traditional Survivor Series match. Oh, shuck it, duck it, quack, quack. Yeah, let's get Del Rio's entrance done and over with. That's the most elaborate and obnoxious of the ten. And if anybody can appreciate things that are elaborate and obnoxious, it's me. And Alberto Del Rio. And David yeah. Otonga. Because it's all about him. It's all about the power. I object. Overruled. <laughs> you can't just keep doing that. Come up with something original. Um, how about your face comes up with something original? Fine. I'll be the executioner. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, no reply. I win. You better sign an affidavit before you do that. An affidavit, Otunga? Ah! <laughs> no. Oh, well, folks, <laughs> that aside... <laughs> Here comes the uh, self-professed new Apex Predator, Alberto Del Rio. Why is Ricardo uh, Rodriguez wearing makeup? I, I don't know. I, I mean, you know, Ricardo Rodriguez is definitely a, uh, a peculiar character, to say the least. And how funny would it be if the entrances in this match would go by order of elimination in reverse, so, like, Del Rio would be the sole survivor? <laughs> I highly doubt it. Of course. Damien Give us a promo on your way to the ring. Enlighten us before you take part in this barbaric tradition. Oh, uh, no microphone in hand. I guess I'll have to go disappointed. <laughs> hey, Ashton, you know what's so epic about this team? Everything. Oh yeah. Actually, I was going to say specifically Damian Sandow and Dolph Ziggler sharing ring space, 
But and here comes Otonga. Oh, Otong Barrett. <laughs> Otungrit. Otungrit. David Otungrit. Bertunga. Bertunga. Now he sounds like a caveman who switched to Geico. <laughs> and Chris Masters. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of multiple personalities, but that's just ridiculous. Bear tungsters. <laughs> it just sounds like some kitchen utensil. <laughs> yeah, that was all Kane. Yeah, Kane, you really screwed the pooch on that one. Yeah, Cody was trying to get a full rotation on that, and Kane didn't give him enough of a push. That was brutal. <laughs> See, and, th and this is the exact kind of barbarism that Damian Sandow was warning us about. <laughs> Wade Barrett's music plays, Nobody Moves. <laughs> Talk about a dead crowd. Oh, my goodness. We'll just have to see how they act when Ziggler comes out to judge whether they're really dead or if Barrett's just nothing. Well, they were just chanting, We won Ziggler only a few moments ago. That's kind of where I'm going with this. Come on, Wade. You Show know the world a superstar is a joke when their Titan Tron is much more interesting than their actual entrance. <laughs> and I'm going to have a tough time overcoming you tonight. <laughs> Come on, Wade. Show them up. Well, the crowd stood up for Ziggler at least. I, I don't hear him, though. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I hear him. Yeah, Ziggler's pretty over. And his shirt's pretty awesome. Everyone knows he's the star on that team. Clearly. As he looks back to the group of scrubs that he's managed to quarrel around him. Well, I mean, uh, clearly, if you don't consider everything that David Otunga has got going on as star power, then I guess Dolph Ziggler's the leader. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, Dolph Ziggler is amazing, and I'm elated by the fact that he's captaining his own Survivor Series team. Uh, the idea that he can take part in such a time-honored tradition in such a capacity is just awesome. Hey, John. Uh, yeah. Bang, bang! Ah, oh, Mrs. Foley's baby boy has come home to the Survivor Series. Sorry, my... Right my here! Miss. In Indianapolis, Indiana. Cue the thumbs up. The cheap pop. The cheap plug for a new product. Buy my book, A Miserable Christmas, in stores now. No, Mick, I don't is, think I will do that. everything miserable. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Kane's the first one out? I guess he is the one that uh, Foley has shown the most confidence in. <laughs> um, they're, <laughs> they're still bickering on... Oh, but, oh, get it together. <laughs> I think they just need to split up. No. Uh, yeah, let them split up and let The Miz team up with Kane and let Daniel Bryan enter the WWE title picture. Where he belongs. Exactly. You ever want to talk about the term underutilized, folks? I think you'll find Daniel Bryan's picture plastered all over the page of that dictionary. We're going to make a dictionary that's literally just no definitions, all pictures. We'll call it Pictionary. That's right, I went there. <laughs> there comes Kofi Kingston. I was going to go for imaginary, but... And really, if I would consider anybody a, a dark horse to really impress at the Survivor Series, you, you know, my oh. money would be on Kingston. Oh, boy. Oh, wow, the crowd's that. actually relatively hot for Miz. <laughs> Looked like it. Unless my eyes deceive me. Well, they voted for him. They better be hot, even if they're faking it. <laughs> oh, crowd, you're so good at faking it. There's an awesome sign, so... Yeah. Now, Ashton, just, just to clarify, so that I'm sure and everybody's sure, 
I, I think it was you There's who mentioned the pup it. of the night, Randy Orton. Sorry I interrupted you, John. I just wanted to point that out. Go ahead. No, of course. I mean, Randy Orton, I think, always gets Bob and I. He's so ridiculously over. He is the team <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. Um, I, I just, just to clarify, Ashton, and just to reiterate, unless your position has changed, I do believe you said in our predictions video last night you were potentially expecting a double turn in this match. Uh, you know, potentially Miz staying face and Orton going heel. And then, of course, the idea was also discussed that Miz does the heel turn. So, so really, just for everybody uh, listening, what, what is the final analysis? Thing. I never mentioned that. Beg pardon? I never mentioned a double turn. I thought one of us mentioned a double turn. Or was that in the comments? It never got brought up in the video last night. That's why we have so many comments saying, hey, why didn't you mention this? Oh, okay, that's what I'm thinking of. Well, honestly, the more I think about it, I mean, Orton's been clamoring to turn heel. And he's just been so standoffish with this team. I mean, there's no way. I, there's no way that the WWE is dumb enough to turn Orton heel. I, I hope not. Because if Orton is really insisting for it, you got to imagine that he has some stroke. But then again, maybe he lost some with his second wellness violation. Exactly. So, like, I, I would imagine maybe like four months ago, if Orton wanted to turn heel the WWE would be like yes sir whatever you say sir whatever you want to do Mr. Orton you got it but now it's just like oh please, you're going to do what we want because we know for a fact that if you screw up one more time you're headed over to visit with Hulk Hogan and Dixie Carter <laughs> yeah you peon <laughs> I don't know that it's quite better and Otunga's is going to get eliminated right one, now two. Oh. oh, he kicked out he survived more than five seconds <laughs> yes he did yes he did because it's all about him it's all about the mini push it's all about the being sold <laughs> oh, look at that. He got offense, John. I'm so proud. Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, look at that. He still survived. I thought Kingston connected. <laughs> oh, Tunga's doing a great job of just doing everything. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, dude. Kofi Kingston starting this match off with some seriously high energy offense. Otunga as uncoordinated as ever, and I am not surprised about any of it. But he's still in this match, and that's all that matters. Yeah, you get that shoulder up, Otunga. There are a lot of people calling for a Randy Orton heel turn. I just don't see it happening. I, uh, see, I, I don't know. Because, you, you know, apparently there's a lot of stock in Miz becoming a babyface now, which I, I still can't really fully wrap my head around it. But regardless... Oh my god, Otunga's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> He's just so bad in the ring. Can we just, like, turn him into a full-time manager or something? I'm not giving up on Otunga the same way I'm not giving up on Wade Barrett. Come here, fuck yet! The most intellectual move in sports entertainment today. <laughs> oh, my goodness, you went there. <laughs> I made it work. I made it work. <laughs> Team Ziggler is trending worldwide. Can you blame them? That team well, is like, the winning team is trending. Yeah, that team is like 32 flavors of awesome. And and then the other team is like 23 flavors of awesome because the Miz is on the other team and he takes away at least nine flavors. <laughs> yeah, Daniel Bryan. I love Damian Sandow. that offense. I love Damian Sandow, but Daniel Bryan is just at the top of my freaking list. <laughs> There's a Colts fan in the crowd. They got demolished by 35 points tonight. <laughs> <laughs> -la 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 -la. That's some really easy material for heels to use because they're in Indianapolis. And the Indianapolis Colts just got their tails handed to them by the Patriots. Oh, oh what a kick to the head of Sandow. I think he'll be joining uh, Cody Rhodes in the concussion section of the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you even eliminate Damian Sandow first. No. They're going to eliminate Damian no. Sandow first, aren't they? No. They're going to eliminate Damian. Oh, wow. Wow. Tonga outlasted Sandow. Wow. In your face, Ashton. <laughs> David Tonga just outlasted Damian Sandow. Wow. Of course, when Damian Sandow loses, we all lose. <laughs> Brian's hilarious. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Are they going to get double disqualified for hitting each other too hard? 
They do have till five, don't they? Oh, my Atlanta. Oh, oh! Yeah, zigzag! <laughs> One, two, yes! Don't He's so perfect! <laughs> See how he, back he slid himself. back like Randy Orton used to do. <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah, Orton. Punch him in the head. <laughs> I didn't mean Ziggler. <laughs> How awesome would it be if Orton and Ziggler were on the same team? Oh, I was just going to say, or I say Orton, punch him in the head, talking about Miz, and he freaking moves Miz out of the way, saves him, and yeah. punches Ziggler in the head. Like, See, just my luck. That's a big guy thing in him, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what the heck, man? Like, like the only positive I could see about Randy Orton turning heel would be him and Ziggler potentially being a unified force down the road, even if it's for, like, a SmackDown taping or two. That would just be all kinds of epic. Here comes yeah, Kingston. You just turn Ziggler babyface and screw Miz and keep him heel. Very extensive history between these two men. Uh, Dolph Ziggler won his very first Intercontinental Championship at the expense of Kofi Kingston, who is the current reigning and defending IC champion. That's right. God, what is that? Uh, what was that? <laughs> that monkey flip, baby. Oh, that monkey flip. <laughs> and this is why I love Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> this is why I can't wait to call him my world heavyweight champion. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like every time he and Kofi get in the ring, they have to pull that spot out just to remind people why they're both so awesome. <laughs> I sell oh everything. I sell everything. Oh my God. <laughs> He does a freaking 450 onto the bare mat and then does another flip the other way. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, man. Dude, just to keep score for everybody, we, we are four on four now. The match down and bore everyone. <laughs> hey, hey. There is one Wade Barrett fan in this room. God, I feel so alone. <laughs> I know. These two have a history in their own right. I mean, came in the Nexus together. Of course, Daniel Bryan got ousted very quickly from that group while Wade Barrett continued to be leader. Oh! oh. <laughs> you Capitalize, know, Barrett. Is, Capitalize. You know a move invokes emotion when everyone in the room reacts the exact same way to it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Del Rio getting an extra little cheap kick in. Where's... Oh, that's right. Kane got eliminated. How could I forget? Because Ziggler's a beast. Are we going to get a double disqualification or a double countout, rather? Nope. I doubt it. I still can't believe Otonga's still in this match. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be the sole survivor. I'm going to laugh it's so hard down to him and he's going to eliminate like three guys with his really really bad looking Uranagi and then he's going to get eliminated by like a Trouble in Paradise or something random like that. Right now whether anybody likes it or doesn't like it the only thing David Otunga is guilty of is being awesome. <laughs> guilty pleasures for the win. No! 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 no. Posing pin and he fails. Nope! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Get put into a submission four inches away from the rope. Still tap out. <laughs> oh, well, that that hurts the pride a little. <laughs> <laughs> but he still outlasted Damien Sandow and Kane. Kane's a former world champion. Yeah, but the other two guys didn't tap out. They didn't surrender their souls to another man. <laughs> well, guess what? The clock says otherwise. Go, <laughs> <laughs> Tonga. <laughs> Head to the showers, you deserve it. <laughs> and, uh. Oh, no, wow. Since I'm just in the mood to be an encyclopedia tonight, we know Survivor Series hasn't been too kind to Del Rio. I mean, last year he lost his WWE Championship at this event. We'll see if his luck can change this year. Yeah, we'll see. yeah so he's 0 for 1. He's 0 for 1. And uh, partaking in some <laughs> epic. Thing, but... I, I don't think that that was intentional. I think that might have been a botch. <laughs> Look at Ricardo. <laughs> Ricardo. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Ricardo on Twitter uh, early, earlier, you know, before the event, actually offered his services to take Cody Rhodes' place. You gotta wonder if he would have been a better fit than Otunga. I guess that's debatable. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Kobe Kingston so, coming unglued. Here Rick, comes the Wildcat. Rick, Ricardo would have tapped right away too, John. <laughs> Look at Kofi. Kofi, yeah, he's a little freaking spark plug, man. <laughs> oh, what height on that boom drop. <laughs> Oh, Kingston's all fired up. I'm just hoping this doesn't mean his downfall. I want to see Kofi Kingston pin Del Whoa. Rio. <laughs> I'm sorry to cut you off there. Just Dolph got put in his place. What a crossbody. Oh. Oh, you can't get any closer than that. You can't. This is, this is getting intense now. I knew this match would be fun, but holy crap. Here comes, comes Nerd again. To slow the pace down and bore everyone again. Hey, hey. <laughs> Winds of change! Black Hole! Oh my god! <laughs> that would have sucked. That would have hurt. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, the souvenir. Oh my god, Wade Barrett's gonna eliminate Kofi Kingston in all of your faces! Yes! <laughs> is someone gonna... No, no one's even gonna try and break it up. Nope. Wade Barrett has just pinned the Intercontinental Champion! There you go, there's a, a potential feud. That'd be interesting. We got Damian Sandow now and Wade Barrett both potentially in the hunt. I smell a triple threat. Come <laughs> on, well, Barrett. You've beaten Orton before. You could beat him again. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't beaten him in like a year, dude. Um, Have you been paying attention the past few weeks? <laughs> I have, actually. Beg pardon? We do a freaking review show of these guys every single week, twice a week. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> but no, I haven't paid any attention to any of it. Well, that's good. That's why I'm here, you know, because we are the best wrestling podcast on the web. <laughs> <laughs> For wrestling fans, by wrestling fans. Oh, yeah. I'll show Mick Foley how to get the cheap pop. Dude, you could say that catchphrase in your sleep. So true. <laughs> when you live it, eat it, sleep it, and breathe it, it's pretty easy, too. Nice. Beautiful suplex from Orton to Barrett. That was just... And that, this, that is exactly why, Ashton, that is exactly why Bret Hart deemed this man the new excellence of execution. 100% correct, yep. I mean, that honor does not get bestowed lightly at all. Daniel Bryan, get somebody, tag in. God, <laughs> yeah, Miz, right. you're such a douche. Yes, he is. What a prissy pants. Seriously. <laughs> Good word there, John. <laughs> Daniel Bryan should just be like, no, 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 and then go over and slap Miz in the face as his form of a tag. And so far, Ashton, how does it feel to be right? I mean, you said Daniel Bryan was a survivor, and he has outlasted his tag team partner, Kane. Yeah, that's true. Let's see how much longer he lasts, though. I'm also pretty, pretty close to being correct with my final four, considering all four of my final four are still in this. Indeed. Remember, I said my final four would be Miz, Orton, Ziggler, and Del Rio, and they are all still alive. And you know what I like? I, I like how th this five-on-five five has been pretty even keel. Like, I, I didn't know if the heels were going to capitalize on the faces just disintegrating, but, you know, we still have three on the heel side and three on the, uh, on the face side. Not sure if you've noticed or not, but uh, it's down to three-on-three, three, and the Miz hasn't even had any ring time yet. Oh, oh look at Brian! Look at Brian! Look at this. I would love to see Del Rio tap out, but I know he won't. Come on, Ricky. You, you, or, or Alberto, <laughs> your time in the show is over. What were you calling him? I called him Ricky for a second. He, he does look like Ricky Ricardo from wow. my at least, at least from the hair. John, why are you so racist? <laughs> it's not racist. It's just, well, yeah, it's racism. But regardless. <laughs> no. 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 Step up no! and into the cross arm breaker. Oh, man. Oh, man, he is going to tap hard, yeah. He really has that cinched in. Holy crap, talk about a stiff arm breaker. Good God. That is why I love Del Rio. <laughs> now, get in there. Oh, wow, Miz is getting in the ring for the first time in the whole match. Oh, man. Dude, it's just like you said, Miz and Orton going to have to work together now to really bring this team victory. Right yep, he's going to tag Orton in right away. Look, oh, they, oh, no, they some eye-to-eye -eye contact. All right, here we go. Let's see if the Miz actually does anything of use, other than be really uncoordinated and not know what to actually attempt to do offensively. And let's see if the crowd will really get behind the Miz here. There we go. Got that big elbow up. I just called the Miz's elbow big. How ironic. Yeah. <laughs> I think JBL's soundbite on SmackDown said it best. Randy Orton may hate The Miz, but he hates losing even more. 
That's a great, great sound bite. Absolutely. And I wouldn't have even thought of it, so I'm glad you're a human freaking encyclopedia. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm just in that kind of mode tonight. But uh, let's see what kind of mode Randy Orton's in here as he as he takes it to Alberto Del Rio. These oh, two, man. Uh, I, I don't expect these two to exchange Christmas cards, Ashen. I was just getting ready to say, I think Orton wants to make Del Rio's chest look like Seamus's. <laughs> Oh, nice. oh, nice kick by the, I'm telling you, those kicks come out of nowhere. And then the arm breaker on the knees. He's such a dirty dog. <laughs> He's such a dirty <laughs> dog, my mom says. <laughs> Alliteration FTW. I'll tell you what he's not, though. He's not the dirtiest player in the game. Woo! Just Indeed. my, uh, Indeed. just my Pillsbury Doughboy Ric Flair there. <laughs> why, why, why a Pillsbury Doughboy? I kind of felt like it sounded like a little bit like the pills right away there. Like towards the end of that, ooh, kind of, yeah. Kind of sounded like somebody poked my belly and I let out a giggle. No cookies for anyone. <laughs> wow, John. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just having too much fun in this match. You, you know it's a good live reaction when, when this kind of matchup can be so electric that uh, you, you get uh, Indianapolis Colts references and pills right away. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my gosh. You know Ziggler handpicked that, that freaking bump. He was just like, Orton, I want you to send me up as high as you possibly can. And Dolph Ziggler just got booked on flight 210 because that's what I call airtime. Good God. Yeah. This is awesome. This match has been awesome. And, and, and how funny you use the word awesome when Miz gets the tag. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play with my words, John. Don't play with my words. <laughs> oh, 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 I did. We, we just played jump rope together, and it was fantastic. <laughs> this goes to the corner and hot clothesline there. Uh-oh. Oh. Wow. oh, oh my! God. <laughs> <laughs> I just gotta laugh because the bumping that Dolph Ziggler has done. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> well, he's where it's gonna be next to be eliminated. Skull crushing no, finale. No, no, no! Yes, yes. Nice. Oh, look at Barrett! Look at Barrett! Oh. Look at Barrett! Just taking it home. <laughs> Nailed that handle flex. Oh, oh. Or, no, it. no, no, no. <laughs> John, Wade Barrett eliminated by The Miz. How does it feel? Now, who are the four that are out there? Final four, exactly yeah. as I called it. That's right. <laughs> nice. Oh, Miz, good good here. Rio. That was beautiful. Oh, my. I thought that was going to be that. That was Miz close. Did, did elimination, and in this type of matchup, I mean, that to me is earning your keep. And Miz is just... I want to roll here. German suplex by Del Rio. Beautiful. Beautiful. And he gets a two count. That was picture perfect, wasn't it? Man, you know what? I'm just so proud of Del Rio and how much he's grown over the latter half of this year. And, man, that was awesome. When we do our, our year-end awards, I think I'm going to have to probably end up giving most improved, which last year went to Mark Henry to Del Rio. Oh. And, I mean, Ashton, what you called has turned out perfectly. I, I mean, this this is... You know, a, a, a rematch from SmackDown, the go-home SmackDown. Del yep. Rio and Ziggler one side, Miz and Orton on another. Foley looking on. and Oh, 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 oh God, that was sick. Oh. It's over. It's over. It's over. Three. Yes. Uh, wow, I really thought Miz was going to make it. Come back and screw Orton. I really thought he was going to make it to the end of the match. I, I am. Yeah, now I'm certain that you're right, Ashton, that Miz is going to stab Orton in the back. Look at Orton. He's just like, oh, only two guys? <laughs> I've outdone this before. Okay. Remember, I remember the Survivor Series 2004. Randy Orton, uh, Team Orton versus Team Triple H. It came down to Orton, Triple H, and Edge. Orton got the victory for his team. That's right. So he's been in this position before. Remember when HBK performed a full sweep? Yeah. That was ridiculous. Ooh. Just his, his team members Ooh. just got... Oh my goodness! That Del Rio was is awesome. Can Fox I just say that right? Two oh nine. Oh my god! That was that was horrid. I feel bad for Orton. He actually looked like he got kicked. Those kicks. Oh, are just like, Look, ref, I have the rope. You can let me get this tag in. I'm sorry. I I just love Del Rio, and I love Orton, and I love Ziggler. Del Rio just botched. 
Yeah, I, I don't know what went on there. It looked awesome at first. I want to see a replay of it because it just happened so fast. They're not going like, to show a replay if it was a mistake. Like, the suddenness of it is what really made me come unglued because it just, like, I blinked and I missed it. Yeah, the WWE isn't going to replay a, a bad botch mistake like that. They're not going to acknowledge that, that one of their guys screwed up. <laughs> Be like, hey, everyone, our guy screwed up. Take a look at it again in slow motion. <laughs> And just really show you how bad we screwed up. We got new sound effects. <laughs> so, uh... What is Del Rio looking to do here? He doesn't usually go up to the top rope. Drop kicks, he's maybe? Gonna a, he's gonna pull a Ric Flair and get evicted from the high rent. Oh my the, god! Yeah, that just happened. Holy crap. RKO. Listen to the crowd. Yeah, the crowd's losing their minds. So far, this has been match of the night, if anybody couldn't tell. Well, absolutely. Not even close. Power slam. Boom! <laughs> Uh-oh. Get out of here, Ricardo. You're scrubbing. You have no business here. No. That's what he wanted kick. to do. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Ow. No way. One, two, kick out. Kick out. Kick out. Good. He kicked out. Oh. Whew. Wow, holy crap. This match is intense, man. That's it. Man. Yeah, that's it, Mick. Yeah. <laughs> Sell that punch, Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> Mandible claw time. I can't believe he still keeps that sock in his pants. <laughs> that's just disturbing. I read somewhere that he sleeps with a sock. <laughs> Seriously. I believe it. How is this man an author of children's books? I wouldn't want my child anywhere near that. <laughs> I Del Rio is just... Okay, he's calling for the end here. Cross arm breaker. Which Orton will probably flip through and get an RKO. Oh! Uh, what was... Turn fake. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Dolph just ate that ring pose. Wow. I mean, this is not legal or anything. Del Rio is the legal man. RKO. Yes! Oh, God, it came oh, up. Oh, beautiful. It came down to Ziggler and Orton. Oh my god, this is happening. <laughs> Come on, Ziggler, get your big pay-per-view moment. Yeah, really. Holy crap. Look at Ziggler, he's just dead in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Ziggler cracks me up, I swear. Not you only does he oversell everything, but, you know, when it comes to playing dead, no one's better. <laughs> You know, Ashton, I know, I know you recall from our uh, Survivor Series live reaction, you know, in, in the post-final uh, analysis of, uh, well, actually not Survivor Series, Night of Champions, I mean to say, uh, that a lot of people were complaining that Orton got the W over Ziggler. Ziggler can undo all of that supposed damage if he's able to pin Orton here at the Survivor Series. Yeah, and whenever Orton does his little freak out like that, he never hits the RKO on the first try. And I was just proven right. Uh, zigzag, 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 yes! Cover! Oh cover! Cover! One! What happened? He's kicked, what happened? Oh, kicked out. <laughs> Come on, Ziggler. Hit a famous sir. Make that your new finisher. Steal Billy Gunn. <laughs> Absolutely insane. Oh, man. This is... How many times do I need to say it? This match is freaking intense. Actually, you were talking about the triple threat being a match of the year candidate. I, I would almost have to want to make this one one. I mean, you know, yeah, it's not one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, it's not exactly the biggest rivalry, but just the intensity. Oh, oh, God, he didn't get RKO'd. He's going to get rope pong ddt Oh, wait, they're awfully close to that other rope for this to actually work. Oh, it was a lift. He even gets a two. No. He's going to get his foot up. No, he's not even going to the pin. Why you is know Orton in the zone right now. Oh. You know Orton's in another place. I wonder... What is Orton doing? Punt! Punt! He's thinking punt! Oh my... Those eyes tell a very cold story. Punt, 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 punt. Back up. I thought, move, I thought that move got banned. I thought WWE didn't want Orton to do that move anymore. Well, he can still attempt to go for it as long as Ziggler gets out of the way. Super kick counter. Well, now oh, what's going on? Yep, he's backing up. He's going for the punt. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Wait. 
to say this match has pulled out all the stops would be a gross understatement. Orton's like, oh, like super kick. This is super like kick. Yeah! <laughs> you called it! Holy balls! Oh, Two! Three! Oh my god! Oh, holy shit. In your oh face, haters! In your face, haters! That was amazing! John, you called the living crap out of that! <laughs> I didn't think you'd get the win off of it, though. Holy shit! <laughs> Yeah, Mick, that just happened. <laughs> yes, it did. Oh, my God. What a nice freaking super kick, too. Do you realize that he just beat Orton in his match, so to speak, because he is a sole survivor? Like, wow. All the people that are like, he should have gone over a Night of Champions. No, no. He went over on his stage, the Survivor Series. And for anybody that ever says, oh, Dolph Ziggler doesn't have any signature wins, Hello! Oh, Dolph Ziggler's a weak money in the bank holder. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that was awesome. Look at wow. Orton; he's just like I. I, I never want to hear another criticism levied against Dolph Ziggler's money in the bank build again. No. This is not only did I pull the living crab out of that; he got the win over it. He just pulled a Shawn Michaels on Randy Orton. <laughs> and how? Ashen, how hilarious is it that you were remarking only a few moments ago how how Shawn Michaels had a sweep at the Survivor Series? Yeah. And Dolph wins with his move. Holy crap. And Dolph also eliminated Kane. Let's not allow ourselves to forget that. That's a pretty big elimination. Oh, uh, Dolph's so awesome. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, my goodness. goodness. Title reign all over again. Now maybe on Friday, Sheamus can run over the big show with a car. <laughs> and then drag him into the ring and hit a brogue kick. Just to make sure the job's done. And then Ziggler catches in. <laughs> I'm going to level with everybody. I mean, I, I I didn't lose any faith in Dolph or anything like that. That's not what I'm trying to imply. But I, I, I was starting to wait a little bit. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for something big to happen for him. I can't wait for him to be world champion. That just got me all kinds of energized. That was insane. You know, Dude, I'm so sorry. Because the is for the longest time, I always found myself comparing John Morrison and Dolph Ziggler. Because it's like they really came up you know, on the same schedule. Like they were... Both in ECW around the same time. They both came up around the same time. They were both in the mid-card title picture around the same time. They were both getting their main event pushes around the same time. And I always said that Morrison would be a better fit for the super kick. But now I'm going to take that back. And holy crap, Dolph Ziggler needs to keep it. No, no. Dol Dolph is just on point. I mean, I, I love, well, you know, Morrison called his super kick the Nitro Blast. But Dolph has just got, man, the impact. And honestly, I gotta be honest, in regards to Morrison, I, I'm even starting to question what's going on with that. I read some very uh, upsetting news. Apparently, he came in an incident with police. I don't know all the details, but I'm just shaking my head. At least, thank goodness, we have Dolph Ziggler bringing pride to the sport of pro wrestling. Just uh, So at least I can be proud of that fact. I mean, Dolph just owned it tonight. <sighs> Damn. I, I, I still can't believe that. And you know what, Ashton? I'm going to be honest with everybody. That triple threat has big shoes to fill. I don't care who you are. CM Punk, John Cena, Ryback. Those ten guys. <laughs> that was insanity. Wow. That's why I love the five-on-five -five match. Thank you, Survivor Series. Seriously. I feel like such a little kid right now. Yeah. I, I haven't seen a five-on-five -five that good since Team Stone Cold versus Team Eric Bischoff. And what that match really had going for was the pure emotion. This just was physicality at its finest that was fun that was that was fun that, that, that match so far has definitely been the high point of these live reactions because you and i were just all over the line rightfully so so are the, the competitors body strewn everywhere and is the triple threat match next it looks like yeah. it it does look like it and i know we can't have the divas match next because you know we already had it exactly so yeah the triple threat wwe championship match is indeed next I wonder if this is wise booking, though, because I, I gave a lot of myself to that five-on-five. Five. I'm hoping I still have something to spare for this triple threat. <laughs> well, as long as they start slow, they'll be able to work us back up. Definitely. Definitely. Wow. That was an amazing match. That, I mean, Dolph Ziggler just beat Randy Orton clean. Yeah. In his match. I mean, you know, Randy Orton has a very decorated history at the Survivor Series. So, yeah. That just happened, folks. Wow. That just happened. Unbelievable. I'm going to go check Twitter and see what people are saying. It better be all praise for this money in the bank, Bill. I don't want to hear any crap. Oh, you know, he's so weak. <laughs> Not after that performance.
Lawler and Cole picked Cena to win. JBL picked Punk. And apparently 90% of no DQ visitors also picked CM Punk to retain. Very interesting statistics going into this matchup. You and I both locked in CM Punk uh, to retain. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So we are a part of that 90%, if you will. And uh, The 90%. The 90%. Uh, <laughs> you know, so we'll see what happens there. As we're getting the video package once again, highlighting how these three men came together for the Survivor Series. Wow. That was an awesome freaking ending. Yeah, I, I'm expecting uh, Big Show Sheamus to take bronze because I, I do think this match will take silver at least. If not gold, we'll have to see what they do. But that five on five. Damn, son. That was intense for the 12 billionth time. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> here Someone on here is calling uh, Dolph Ziggler's supercut the sweet Zig music. Nice. Wow. Man, that, that Matt, like, seriously, these three guys are going to have to work their tails off to get us reinvested because I'm going to be thinking about that match until they do. That, yeah, you and me both. I, th I think the only creeping thought I will have in regards to this match that will be trying to push the awesomeness of that match out of the way will be can CM Punk survive 364 days. I love that line by Ryback. Revenge is a confession of pain. I'm not in pain. I'm hungry. I never thought I'd see the day that somebody got over with a food gimmick. <laughs> I mean, Simon Dean tried, but he failed pretty hard. Uh, with his patented Simon system. Do you think people still remember that? <laughs> Unfortunately, I do. Believe me, it's something I'd like to forget. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was a fan of Simon Moon. More specifically, I was a fan of Nova. We're all entitled to at least one guilty pleasure in this lifetime. There's no guilty pleasure about it. Nova was amazing. I suppose. I think the best thing he ever did was when he hooked up uh, you know, with Maven. I guess they had their own little fitness guru type faction and then Stone Cold had a segment with them, which was just outright hilarious. You don't remember the the uh, the BWO, the Blue World Order? Oh yeah, the Blue World Order with uh, Stephen Richards and uh, let's see, Blue Meanie. Blue Meanie. Yeah. Oh, nice ring gear by Cena. We can't really uh, make fun of him for being a part of a rainbow or uh, or a cereal. He, he kind of looks like a honeybee, I guess. Or, or a Mars candy. Neat, isn't it? Yeah, it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's like a slate slash navy blue with the yellow. Uh, yellow letters and a big obnoxious red slash sign through the letter C. <laughs> That's the only thing that throws it off. Like if that would be a color that actually, you know, doesn't look obnoxious on that shirt, the shirt would be pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, only under that one condition. <laughs> I mean, it's just another never give up, just recolored. And, and, and kids are going to need to buy it, and their parents are going to be dumb enough to do so. And uh, TLC will be December 16th this year in Brooklyn, New York. John Cena single-handedly trying to turn crowds into rainbows since 2007. <laughs> Your diabolical schemes will fail, Cena. Punker, wow, Ryback's coming out last. That's actually surprising. That would be hilarious if Punk didn't show up and he just showed up on the Titan Tron like, hey, hey, I'm the champion. I'm coming out last. Ryback, get out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll probably rant about it tomorrow night on Raw. Yeah. Probably be like, and the WWE champion didn't even get to come out last. Respect. <laughs> Paul I Heyman like that Paul Heyman has managed to incorporate himself into Punk's entrance with the watch. I know. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Punk's such a beast. 
Oh, by the way, to the person that asked if uh, if we had seen the CM Punk documentary in a comment section for the Survivor Series preview video, yes, I have. It was amazing. End of story. Anybody that hasn't should check it out. John, did you? No, I did not. So that, well, that, that makes you somebody that hasn't seen it, and that means that you should check it out. Exactly. There you go. Of course, I also need to still check out the Stone Cold documentary that I got last Christmas, and that hasn't happened either. Yeah, and you're the only person that I know that absolutely loves John Morrison and doesn't have John Morrison Rockstar. Though I did watch it on YouTube. You oh did? yeah, I didn't, know that. I didn't know you actually got to watch it. Yeah, it was beast. I love the parkour segments they had in there. God, I miss him. But again, that felt so superfluous to me. But I'm sure that it just tickled your bones. Indeed, but again, today, I'm just shaking my head. Morrison, get your act together. <laughs> Ziggler like, is single-handedly doing him proud, though. Definitely. I mean, that that was beast. Just like CM Punk is looking like a beast. 364 days and counting, and nice best in the world sign. And, and it's nice to see some people are pro-punk and they can appreciate how far he's come. But I'll be interested to see the kind of pop that Ryback gets here when he arrives. I wonder if Ryback is going to be wearing yellow, too. Nope. Although he does have some yellow in his uh, arm straps there. Well, Punk's got a yellow shirt, and Cena's text is yellow on his shirt. I didn't know if they were just trying to bring back the, uh, what was it, the Killer Bees. Right. Or, you know, the awful Pittsburgh Steeler throwback jerseys that they're playing in tonight that look like frickin' prisoner uniforms and should never be seen by a human eye again. <laughs> he does have yellow in there. Yeah, he does. There is yellow in there. I think all three competitors have supporters in this crowd. And I think Some... all three competitors are wearing far too much yellow collectively. <laughs> yeah, what an eyesore they've just generated. <laughs> Take advice from, you know, everyone that's wearing pink. Even though some people might find it to be a girly color, I find it far easier on the eyes than yellow. That was somewhat of a Damien Sandow-esque promo you just kind of cut there. (laughs) (laughs) What? I'll take it. He's an amazing promo worker. You all criticize me because I wear pink, but you'd realize that pink is the most aesthetically pleasing of the colors. You're welcome. (laughs) <laughs> and, and I was trying to think of people that wear pink I should have just threw out Sandow and then um, earlier on in the night I mentioned it and now I realize it was Sig- Sin Cara and Rey Mysterio they both had pink on too here we go who's gonna go after who you have to Triple think the baby faces will team up against They're, the heel dude the two baby faces are gonna team up on, on punk <laughs> or, or punk's just gonna leave and make them fight <laughs> <each other. laughs> Or John Cena and Punk are going to make fools of themselves while Ryback just kind of (laughs) chills. Look at Punk just running away from everyone. This is going to be fun. (laughs) Pop! (laughs) And the double team commences. I've been working on my cardio for 364 days. You can't catch me. (laughs) (laughs) As Jesse Eisenberg's character in Zombieland would say, rule number one, cardio. (laughs) Oh! Oh! Oh, getting a little scrappy. Nope. No, we both know what's going to happen. Oh, oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, Punk just did that. <laughs> yeah, he did. I mean, it's not like it was a heel move, considering he's already a heel. <laughs> <laughs> it was an appropriate move. I just love the scowl oh, on ah! Punk's face. Punk just got stomped, and now he's getting slammed. Next thing you know, he's going to get kablowed. <laughs> I thought Ryback was going to go for that powerbomb. I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> Here comes Cena. Bulldog. The way they look there so well. Yeah, really. <laughs> look at Heyman. Heyman's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> the WWE champion, man. You keep him in the ring when you fight him. That, that, was, that was always my favorite part of Heyman when he was working with Lesnar, and Lesnar was the top dog, and he was facing Undertaker on Hell in a Cell. Just the faces Heyman would make, like the hopelessness. <laughs> Heyman is the Dale of WWE. It's so true. 
It's like, <laughs> Brock, Brock, we're losing. Brock, and he just make these faces. Like, you'd almost feel bad for him if you didn't know that he was such a scuzz bucket slime ball. Or when Brad Maddox screwed Punk out of that one match on Raw, and he was just like, wait a minute, he's a referee, give him air, he needs to breathe. <laughs> I love Paul Eamon so much. Don't crowd him, he's a referee. <laughs> Like, I mean, who cares if the stories of people working in the original ECW having bounced checks were true? I'd stick around just for the humor that that man probably possesses. <laughs> I'm definitely a Paul Heyman guy at the risk of having Ow, dead up I'm my eyeballs. Just out-muscled Ryback. Holy Charzel Muffin. Pow! Wow, <laughs> wow. Battle of the Bulls right here. Ba- Battle of the Bulls. Irresistible oh, force meeting the immovable said, object. That's what you said earlier about Tenzai and Brodus Clay. Yeah, but this is more apropos. It really should have been Battle of the Jobbers earlier. I was just going to say, the last one was more like the Battle of the Cows. This one's the Bulls. <laughs> Get it? Because yep. Tenzai and Brodus Clay are fat. <laughs> that's so obvious. What is Punk doing? <laughs> What the hell? expressions? John Cena added a sixth oh. move. Belly to belly suplex. Belly to back suplex by Cena. Was it belly to back? I, 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 yeah, it was, it was belly to back. Awful short-term memory, apparently. It's okay. And it's pretty sad when Punk's been champion for 364 days and the highlights aren't necessarily going to be Chris Jericho pouring beer all over him or him overcoming Mark Henry. It's going to be those dance moves and those awkward facial expressions that accompanied them. Wow. (laughs) What a legacy. What a maneuver. (laughs) John Cena with the front face lock. What a maneuver. I'm still waiting. You know, if if I was going to pull that out, I should have pulled it out in the five on five. Yeah. With the super kick. Probably. Yeah, because I called it, too. Yeah. Damn. I was so awesome there. <laughs> Punk with the rolling elbow. Why did he spin in a circle like that? Because he's, it's a throwback to Cassius Ono. He's paying respect. And somewhere, Cassius Ono's going to sue somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a mockery. That was a tribute. That was probably one of the flimsiest looking elbows I've ever seen. I, just, I hope no one ever pays homage to me. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Punk's facial expressions are cracking me up in this match. <laughs> Every time he gets caught by someone, he's just like, oh, God, that oh. just happened. Him and Heyman are just so perfect for each other. Whoa, what a maneuver. I got it in. Oh, my goodness. That felt very premature, John, by the way. I'll redeem myself. <laughs> but I thought you were only allowed to use one a night. <laughs> I break my own rules, fool. <laughs> yeah, what else? Like, I, a word, the word, the two words, rather, I, I think I would use to uh, describe this pay-per-view would be like adrenaline rush. Because it seems like virtually every match on this card has had a quick pace. I haven't really felt like like a slow, ridiculous pace like for very much in this pay-per-view. Wow, wow. Really? At, like, First Punk uses the rolling elbow. Now he's using the horns of Ares. <laughs> yeah, what I believe uh, Ares calls it now the last chancery. Well, regardless, he's he's mocking. So well, what a counter by Ryback. <laughs> First it was Chris Hero, then it was Austin Ares. What's next? Are we going to get an Emerald Fusion? Maybe. Hey, maybe this is his last night as champion, so he's paying tribute to the Indies. Oldies and Indies by CM Punk. <laughs> Offense includes Ric Flair attempting to go off the top rope. <laughs> I just want to see how John Cena will sell Ryback's lariat. I, I want to see Ryback connect with one of those lariats on Cena. It'd be hilarious if he somehow managed to do a full backflip. Yeah. Just pulling Evan Bourne on him. Ah, <laughs> keep going back to the well, Cena. You failed. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, he walks back away <laughs> hey, it's like I didn't do it <laughs> I think John Cena is going to do snow angels <laughs> I, like how Heyman, like, I like how Heyman puts his hands up when this is a no disqualification match it wouldn't even matter if Heyman had a part to play anyway yeah. but he's just like he's just trying to create an alibi for himself like that wasn't me it wasn't me <laughs> nice shot punk wow 
best in the world. I, I want to see a Hadouken. Just pay, pay, pay some tribute to Kenny Omega. Hadouken. I'm not familiar with that move. I got to be honest. <laughs> I got to show my ignorance on that one. It's a. It, yeah, yeah. It's not even worth explaining at this point. People will get it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, that... Cena always goes full on with the freaking shoulder tackles onto the steel stairs when he gets thrown into them. Like, he can't just get thrown into it. He needs to Listen. just straight up tackle it. Feed me more chance, baby. Feed me more chance. People he get is behind so the back. Wow, that was like a weird pounce-looking move. The pounce! No comment? No. Not right now. <laughs> like you don't like the alpha male Monty Brown? I was actually thinking about his Marcus Corvon gimmick in ECW. Oh. I I just I kind of don't want to forgive you for making me relive that. Yeah, well, I was thinking about Monty Brown, so it's not my fault you have. Well, they they both equally suck because they both eliminate themselves in battle royals. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that too. That was. Bad. <laughs> oh, what a maneuver! There we go. Now I feel good. That still felt premature. Ah, uh, shut your cake hole. Oh, what? <laughs> I don't know. At least your hole was a different kind of pain. He's <laughs> just like, no, 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 don't do this to me. <laughs> Cena's just like, okay, I'll, I'll stop him. You're welcome, punk. Ryback. <laughs> Imagine Ryback tapping out to an STF. Oh, my goodness. Well, it's Ryback's going to come up with some ingenious counter to it that relies solely on his power. Like, he's going to lift Cena up or some crap. <laughs> roll over on him for the pin? Because that's really easy? Potentially. I mean... Uh -oh, Cena's making an angry face. We know it's cinched in. I was just going to say, Cena's shoulders are perfectly even, and they're they're kind of, like, like uncovered, and, and no one's even close. It's uh -oh. like... Yeah, Punk's getting up on the top rope. What's he going to do? Elbow drop. Jump on both of them. Elbow it's, drop. It's kind of bad when Ryback hasn't even made any effort to inch towards the ropes. <laughs> yeah, he's just kind of like sitting there taking it. <laughs> Look at Punk taking his time. Like, Ryback's not going to tap out. <laughs> yeah, that, that probably hurt on Ryback's part. Punk looks like he might have landed a little bit awkwardly, though. That's not good. And Heyman's just enjoying all of it. Heyman's <laughs> just like, yeah, that's my champion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's my meal ticket. Yeah, pretty much. Heyman's gonna get paid. <laughs> yep. That was dumb. That was a dumb spot. I blame Cena for not being closer to this to proper turnbuckle. I wish I wish Punk would have gone to the other turnbuckle. This way they could have made it so the Ryback would have inched towards the ropes. Like, you know. Just kind of stayed there. Did John Cena and, just seriously hit a calf kick on CM Punk? Is he trying to be Alberto Del Rio or Evan Bourne? It's, just, it's the Survivor Series. You don't know what to expect. I already mentioned doing an Evan Bourne self in Lariat, but he totally didn't pull that off. <laughs> Look at Ryback making act like a freaking gorilla, slamming his chest like Sheamus, except even cooler. <laughs> oh, Punk. What is he doing? Wow, Ryback! This is my time. This is my time. Well, Ryback's dumb. <laughs> and then he goes out to be like, "Oh wait, that just he happened." Finish it? Is he gonna try and do Spanish announce table? Both of them? Spanish okay. announce table. Spanish announce table. That's right. This is technically a no DQ match. Might as well. He's we actually gonna go Spanish for announcers wow. earlier in the night. You, then you. Oh my no. Go for a double shell shot. No. Wow. No. Can you say ego? I mean, good job, Punk. <sighs> No, but on the outside, uh, oh, oh, you know, sold it. That could have been an epic pay-per-view moment. Screw you, punk. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? I don't know where Ryback would have landed it because he would have had to uncover the table because just doing it bare on, on all that just seems like it would be really painful. So, What's CM Punk doing with his hands on the table? <laughs> Wrong table. Like you go over to the Spanish announce table. Don't ruin Oh, they're ruining the English one. <laughs> It doesn't matter. It was probably made in China anyway. No big loss. Yeah. <laughs> it was probably made in China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Cena and Punk are working together now, by the way. Just thought I'd point that out. You gotta be kidding me, says Cole. Oh, Cole. Oh, wow, that was beautiful. You want to talk about premature? Oh. 
Oh, Charzel, Ducky, Muffin, Quack. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm glad you waited until now to break that one out because that didn't feel premature. That felt perfect. <laughs> I think Ryback got cracked in the back of the head by the one um, wall of the table. I don't know what else to call it other than a wall, but you get the idea. You watch, though. <laughs> We've seen this before, Ashton. When when the biggest threat gets taken out in a match, it comes down to the two guys that you know have like a really extensive history, but then the big threat comes back in full force towards the tail end. So this isn't the last we've seen of Ryback. That freaking concussion from that table. Good God, that was that. Like I don't know if you saw it or not, but the the middle of the table collapsed, but the end that was closest to both Punk and Cena, like that side that that Ryback's neck was on kind of stayed standing up when he landed. So, like, that looked really, really, like, bad, like, botchy, painful. And Cena now. Oh, for Punk to kick him in the head again. I love it when he does that. Cena going to try. What would this be for the third time tonight, Ashton? Yeah. Five moves and he connects. Can he go all the way with it? And no, he oh, cannot. GTS! Obviously, he's going to kick out at this point. Yeah, nobody was surprised by that. Except Punk. But even he knew it on the inside. Yeah. I'm being told that this match has been going on for 25 minutes already. It does not feel like it at all. It feels like it's been going on for a lot less than that. It feels like 15 at least. Yeah. Uh-oh. And another kick out. What a maneuver! Oh, Really? Really? <laughs> and the kick out by Punk. Yeah, yeah, I won. No shame. <laughs> yeah, Heyman's, Heyman's reminding the referee how to count. That was two. Yeah, we, we all know, Heyman. You can, you can cob yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool, cool your shit there, Heyman. <laughs> CM Punk chants in the crowd. We have a pro-Punk crowd. I love it. I mean, Ashton, I, I know you said Punk's really good at just getting rid of his fans like one by one and, you know, in chunk by chunk, but maybe this is one time where Punk's just going to have to embrace some of the people. I was going to say, maybe the crowd's too big for him to single anyone out like that. <laughs> right. JBL's texting. He's not even worrying about the match. <laughs> he's, he's like, he's, he's like, there looking at his, he's probably tweeting. Check Twitter. <laughs> it's like, I'm too busy reviving Mama Jawama energy. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's tweeting somebody to set up his next mountain climb. <laughs> yeah, I already conquered Kilimanjaro. <laughs> What's next? St. Helens. That is true. Yeah, I don't think he's done that one yet. And oh, Shining Wizard in the corner by Punk. I mean, I was kind of joking, but it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> I mean, the mountain climbing has done wonders for JBL. He looks fantastic. I don't hear anybody calling him Jiggling Boobs Layfield anymore. Yeah, yeah, I know. But Punk looks he's like a monster. He's in serious pain. Yeah, definitely. This match has really started to take its toll. Still tactics. Oh, oh, damn. Where's Ryback? I bet you Ryback's going to make his return to the match before Punk gets a chance to get to the I see somebody silhouette. I don't know if that was Cole or if that was the monster Ryback, but regardless. Ta-da, oh. Ta monster... guys. Oh, what a... Oh, shucky-ducky. You can do this one, uh, John. Uh, I, I dude. Said, do this one, John. Oh, uh, well, it, it's too late. You've already reminded me twice. You can do it for punks. He is going to kill Punk. What a maneuver! <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, Punk kind of undersold that one. I think Cena did a better sell job in this case. <gasps> is, is Ryback, Ryback going to become the champion? Is Ryback, Ryback going to become the champion? Where is Where is Cena? Where is Where's Heyman? That's a better question. Oh, What's Heyman? Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. No way. <laughs> Oh, it was Cena. Woo! Holy crap! What? Oh. Hey, you're slacking, dude. What kind of an investment is Heyman if he can't even get physically involved? Holy oh, crap! Now Ryback has Cena up! Oh, no way. you got to be kidding me. Oh, my goodness. Who is this? He's going to kick out, though. What is this? Is that... Is, wait, who... Wait. Straight Edge Society 2.0? Rollins, Ambrose, and Reigns. Oh, my God! What? You finally got it! You what? Is that is that Ambrose? I can't see. It's too blurry. It is Ambrose. Oh my god! 
but Rollins, we already know he's on NXT. What's going on? Rollins? Roman Reigns? That's Roman Reigns, right? Yeah, dude, what the hell? Holy balls! Punk's going to retain. Oh! This is amazing! You finally got Dean Ambrose on television. Dean Ambrose, holy crap! And Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. And I just went on a huge diatribe in our last NXT discussion about how amazing Roman Reigns has become. But does that mean Rollins... Oh my god, up? Michael Cole's calling Dean Ambrose by his real name. He actually know like, they're acknowledging him. Holy... Yeah. What is this? What, no. what is this? What is what is this? Oh my god, this is amazing! A crucifixion! Yes. Dean Ambrose is on my television! Ryback just got sent to hell! Oh my god! Seth Rollins is a heel! Does that mean he dropped the title to Mahal, maybe? Like, what is- Look at Amos' face! What I'm doing? Amos just like, what the hell was that? I'm doing. Pug that was crawling towards Cena! Is this going to be... There's no... No, Cena's going to kick out. 365. 365. 365. Oh, my God. Look at this. Heyman's like, wh who are those guys? Oh, he totally knows. Heyman's a slime ball. Oh, my God. That just happened. Dean Ambrose has finally graced your television, Ashton. Uh, yeah. And he debuted on a pay-per-view. Didn't you call that? Didn't you say the best way for Ambrose to debut would be in a pay-per-view like this? Oh my god! I didn't I didn't necessarily say with a faction, but I'll take it. <laughs> Dude, with a faction that has Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns, I'll take it. Dude, this is happening. That happened. But now I'm just curious who Rollins dropped it's, the title. Like, what's going on? That actually, I felt that. John, this isn't a dream. Wait, wait, are you sure? Pinch yourself real quick. My mom just pinched me. I just had her do it. No, no, this is happening. In your faces, Dean Ambrose is finally on television. Yes. That's weird. Oh, uh, what a pay-per-view. Lead out. What a pay-per-view. No, you know what? I still say the five-on-five five is match of the night, but this triple threat gets moment of the night with the debut of that faction. Oh, my oh. God. Punk survives they again. Came. They just came. They were under the ring, weren't they? No. They came from back. I can't believe Rollins is a part of this, though. Like, I guess maybe Mahal will be the new NXT champion. Like, this this raises so many questions. Dude. I love it. It doesn't matter. I don't care. <laughs> the point of NXT is to create talent for WWE, and holy crap, success. Hey, remember what Triple H said. Don't you dare bring these guys on TV unless you give them something to do. Yeah. Well, correct oh, me if I'm wrong. God. Ambrose but... is amazing! <laughs> Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins just screwed Ryback out of his dream, the WWE Championship. Oh. But, uh... Um, the last thing I feel like is that this is a nightmare. Hey, everybody, guess what? If you have no clue who these people are, listen to the last episode of TwitWow. We had a pretty long discussion about all three of them, I believe. Maybe not Rollins, but we had a long discussion about Roman Reigns, and we always talk a little bit about Dean Ambrose. Yeah, absolutely. And hell, not even just this past episode of TwitWow. I mean, TwitWow, period, actually, especially when we started covering NXT. I mean... <laughs> Look at Punk! He's doing the Ryback arm motion instead of saying, feed me more. He's saying, best in the world. Well, that was absolutely amazing. I need to compose myself so we can talk about the pay-per-view and review it. He's officially been the champion for a full year. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Well, hey, the clock's going to strike midnight in like an hour and 14 minutes. Oh. I mean... Yeah, but I mean, he won the, he won the title around like 10.30 at night. So tomorrow at 10.30 at night, he'll have his one-year celebration. Holy crap. Dude, Dean Ambrose just debuted on, on, on a pay-per-view. Dude. Oh, my God. I, I, just, I just checked my Facebook after the pay-per-view went off air. A, a friend of mine just asked, did you guys just explode just now? NXT guys showed up, and I just had to make sure you didn't mark your head off. And we did. And you'll hear it oh. eventually. Oh, we did. What a pay-per-view. 
Holy crap. Where do we even start, dude? Where's the most appropriate place to start? Well, we already <laughs> talked about the pre-show, which doesn't even do this pay-per-view justice. Um, What was the curtain jerker? The five-on-five five with uh, Gabriel and Kid and all those guys. And yeah, that was okay. That was a great opener just to get the crowd unglued, to kind of set oh. the tone for what they wanted the pay-per-view to be. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble focusing. <laughs> Between the, that that other five on five and then this triple threat, holy crap! Oh my goodness! It's a great nice to be us too. I mean, Dolph Ziggler pinning Randy Orton, Dean Ambrose finally on television. Okay, we're not gonna go through like match by match and 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 discuss what happened because we we literally just reacted to all of it. Just overall, this was one of the top three wrestle. Or, uh, I almost said WrestleMania. One of the top three pay per views of the year, I think. I mean, again, to just use your system as I've liked to do after live reactions, search it, skip it, buy 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 it. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be completely honest with our audience here. When I say buy it, most of the time I don't personally buy it. I'm just recommending that if you have the money and you can afford to buy stuff like that to do so, I might actually have to buy this one. Like this will be on my Christmas list. If I, if, if not, I'll just buy it myself with my own money. Cause I do have a job I'll be able to manage. But like this, this is one of the most memorable pay-per-views I would say since I'd say since WrestleMania, as far as just being purely memorable. I got chills. I, I can't even focus right now. Like, <laughs> like match quality wise, I'm not even going to try and rate it or anything and be like, oh yeah, it runs right up there with this pay per view and that pay per view, but it's not as good as this pay per view. I'm just going to say, I'm going to remember this pay per view better than any pay per view other than WrestleMania this year. Definitely, dude. Definitely. And I might what even the... put it ahead of WrestleMania because the... nobody debuted on WrestleMania. Although I will say, you know, like 18 seconds and Hell in a Cell and that kind of stuff, it's going to be memorable. But, like, this is huge. Holy crap. Like, Dolph Ziggler pins Randy Orton. CM Punk manages to retain. We get a massive trio of debuting NXT guys. I, like, I, I think I'm still marking out, and I just don't realize it. I, I'm, I'm managing to pull myself together enough to form sentences, but I'm still, like, losing my mind on the inside. Dude, I, I can't even think right now. What what the hell did we just witness? I, I'm gonna, you know what, John? You usually say this. It's my turn. I'm going to rate the replay button on YouTube when that comes up. Yes. Oh, I have my favorites. I know you like to favorite just about every good video that you see by a friend or, or anything like that. I have 21 favorites on my favorites list. This is going to make 22. Definitely. Definitely. That was amazing. I'm like my jaw hasn't come off the floor since that happened, other than for me to flap it to talk. I just what happened? What happened? That was oh my god, Dean Ambrose is finally on television. Cover point for that pay per view. Oh please, he didn't do anything. That was that was great. Whew, holy that, crap. Uh, let me just put it to you guys like this from me. Let, let me just try and gather some semblance of a thought together. Uh, five on five was still match of the night for me, but as I stated in the live reactions... That was moment of the night, yeah. Moment of the night goes to the triple threat, hands down. Definitely. What an... Roman Reigns, who just very recently debuted on NXT, Rollins, who was the very first NXT champion, and Dean Ambrose, who's just been in obscurity, have all come together tonight. And I the... fully expect either comments or like just a, an in-flood, an incoming of PMs on my YouTube channel. I'm not saying that if you haven't done it yet and you're listening to this now that you should. I'm just saying that I'm fully expecting to get a bunch of comments and messages from people saying, OMG, Dean Ambrose finally debuted. How do you feel? And to answer the questions, <laughs> amazing, ecstatic, elated. There aren't enough adjectives for me to use. I mean, I, I'm so happy that it's finally come because, I mean, yeah, we would kind of troll each other back and forth over it. But I, I have waited for this for so long for Ashton because I know he said, you know, Dean Ambrose would be my guy because uh, we'd always talk about, you know, having that horse in the race. And he said, well, if I, I could deem anybody that it would be Dean Ambrose. Well, Dean Ambrose has arrived and already he's taken WWE by storm. Man, <laughs> how'd that table taste John, drive? He did debut by taking out John Cena, like I said. It might have been even better. 
he took out an even hotter commodity. He debuted by taking out Ryback. Well, well, here's the thing, actually. He he debuted by taking out a guy who purely is babyface. He doesn't get a mixed divide reaction. Yeah, exactly. And you know That's what? Like- he he did he, the the little three man faction took out Ryback right as he was about to win the WWE Championship from CM Punk. They robbed but Ryback of his dream. Ryback gets screwed again. I think we might get another triple threat at TLC. Same match. See, and I disagree. I disagree. I think we're going to get Ryback versus Punk in a TLC match. But then what does Cena do? Cena goes with Ziggler because the scandal continues. And hell, Ziggler pinned Orton tonight. Move on to John Cena. Can you imagine if Ziggler would beat John Cena at the TLC pay-per-view? Dude, maybe – oh, I don't know. This is – okay. We need to stop recording and just kind of do our gushing on our own time. So let's kind of wrap this up. John, do you have anything left to say about this other than amazing? This made me feel like a kid again. The the traditional five-on-five match was everything I wanted it to be and then some. And I want to thank WWE from the bottom of my heart for that because I am a sucker for that match. And that was, again, match of the night for me. This whole pay-per-view was fantastic. Even the lower card matches provided some uh, aspect of entertainment. The opener was great. I felt like the United States Championship match was a bit sluggish. I mean, Cesaro came out on top, and he looked dominant. This was a night, I'll tell you what, this night belonged to the Indies because Cesaro came out on top, Punk came out on top, and Rollins, Ambrose, and Reigns all debuted and sent Ryback to hell. I mean, this was just fantastic. Great pay-per-view. All right, guys. This pay-per-view was amazing. I'm going to go find that clip on YouTube and just watch it repeatedly and, and maybe try and identify exactly what people were saying because I was too busy marking out to hear what the commentators were saying. Uh, favorite it, obviously. And try and get some sleep because it's another one of those things where when something this amazing happens, it's tough to sleep that night. It's like the night before Christmas. Uh, but, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go now. And John is, is going to gonna go as well. So we'll talk to you guys later. Be sure to stay tuned for TwitWow because Monday Night Raw has just got a little more interesting. I will talk to you guys later, and this is Ian Izzle signing out.